Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of EXP Plus Workshop presented by Escape. I'm KCB here and together with me today is Jason here and we'll be your coaches for today. So today Jason come at my house and you know eat eat like Mexican foods then we are here to teach you guys lah because his house cannot really stream. So we have to do it within one webcam. So if you want to zoom in to his face, please do so. Uh. Yeah. So let's move on. But before we uh, start the show, uh, there has been a Facebook post that asks you guys to share and tag your friends. And we will be announcing the winners later on. So please do, you know, do share this post. Please do whatever it takes to get the skins lah, because it's free, right? Just need to share and tag your friends. Not hard lah. Okay. So let's move on. So okay, today we'll be talking about uh roles doing workshop three, and as you all know, uh there is six roles right. So uh we will be splitting into roles part one and part two. So the next workshop I'll be talking about the other three roles, but for now I'll be just talking about three roles, and these three roles is within me and Jason's uh forte. Yeah, so actually you'll be surprised on the roles that we'll be talking about lah. So we shall move on. So firstly, uh, let me introduce myself again for those that have not uh not really know me. I'm uh KZP. I'm also the professional mobile legends player for Resurgence and as well as the captain slash the tank slash the drafter. So if you guys have any questions regarding all those for the Q and A, you guys can ask a bit lah. Don't ask so much ah, because uh, uh, regarding drafting all this, we have a separate uh workshop for you guys to you know talk about it and help you all understand more on the draft and how to lead the team this kind of thing. So, uh, maybe a simple questions I can answer, but when it comes to talking about in deep drafting questions, I won't be able to answer even if you guys ask me during the Q and A. So, please ask about uh role stuff regarding for today. And Jason will be the one that an answering all your questions for the Q and A, uh, in between slides lah. So you all can, uh, try to ask relevant questions. Thank you so much. So, welcome. Uh, do uh, we will try to introduce Jason here. So he'll be introducing himself. Hi everyone. First time here. Huh? <laughs> Special guest. Okay. Uh, my name is Jason. My J and Jason as well. Professional MLBB player for Resurgence. As well as a uh, vice captain, because I assist with the draft pick for the game lah. A little bit, a bit, a little bit about myself. Uh, been in the esports scene for maybe eight years right now. Been playing a uh, MOBA for quite a while lah. So if you know me from other games, that's good lah. So for today, we will be talking about roles as KZV mentioned. I'll be answering all your queries uh, regarding to this topic. So if you have anything, uh, you have some burning questions or you want to ask about me, about my life, uh, go ahead. Uh. Today <laughs> only you get to ask in the Twitch chat. Okay. Yeah. So we'll move on. Right, okay. Thank so you. this one, maybe he, maybe once or twice he'll appear in the workshop. So if you really want to see the uh, Jason at the end of this uh, workshop, right, please spam the comments down below. Uh. If not lah, uh, I think he won't come already uh. This may be the one, uh, one and only time right The comments to spam to get me in is Hashtag Jason in Wow okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah yeah yeah, I think so also Yeah, Jason in lah, uh, hashtag lah uh. No Jason in then Jason out already Means hashtag I'm out uh, Alright alright, okay So let's move on Yeah, so before we start right uh, I would like to thank you guys for supporting us during the MPLI playoffs uh, for the winner bracket all the way to the finals. I mean, it was quite a tough journey la, for this MPLI, especially we are fighting against uh, Indonesians, we are fighting against Myanmar, we are fighting against uh, Malaysians, and we are the only Singaporean teams right there in the MPLI. So for those that of you that are supporting us, we really thank you all. And I hope that we didn't su disappoint you all with our results and our plays. La. If there's any plays, you all, uh, you all have any questions, you all also can spam the comment down below. We will try our best to answer you and give you the answers that you all really want to hear. La. But uh, before that, there is no trolling in the games. La. We didn't throw any of the games during the MPLI. 
they are all serious games inside. So, yeah lah, please ah, uh, we thank you all lah. So let's move on. Johnson is legit, by the way. Yep, jo- Johnson is legit lah. So before we start, do you want to read any comments right now? Okay, can. So I see a lot of hashtag Jason in right now. So hopefully your comments will help me to join the next workshop lah. I love it lah. Love it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason in. Oh, okay. Uh, thank, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you explain the Johnson pick ah? I think Johnson pick ah, uh, it's like we just uh after the game of Myanmar, we won them two one already. Then we just like think to ourselves and then look at each other's face and say, I think Johnson is the pick to go ah. And okay lah, let's do it lah. Let's all in. And our thought process was to surprise them. But then I think that game we got surprised by ourselves, right? Uh, of course. Yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah, we got surprised. We surprised at how the Johnson name worked out as, as yeah, well as it did in our yeah, hits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the Johnson was okay. But then I think the early game wasn't that good to set up for the Johnson. La. So in order to pick a Johnson well in the competition, right? I rec- after playing that game, I realized that actually we need more early games. To, and as well as those tanky early games to cra- cover up the Johnson scouting around the bushes. Because if without a Johnson driving, then you must have a tank to, you know, scout as a ward in one of the bushes, right? So, uh, because Johnson will be driving around, then you won't have that person to scout around. So, uh, after picking and after got surprised by our own picks, we realized that we need one more tank with that. Lah. So, maybe our Hilda could have changed into something like a Cho or someone that can help us start the fight and without the Johnson then afterwards the Johnson come in and then you know start the fight in a perfectly way lah. then the game is just I only got one target to bang which is the Selena then other than that I think I can't bang anyone lah. and our team got a bad start in the early game so after all it's a link we are fighting and we have a 1-1 side so we lost the early game quite hard and the link managed to snowball the early game so, if that game we will have an earlier, uh, earlier good start and one one managed to farm until the mid game, I think that draft is good. Maybe we change the Hilda or yeah, I think the Hilda, Hilda or something else needs to change uh, and win the early game. Then maybe we could have won the late game lah. So that's my opinion regarding that questions lah. So no trollings uh, guys. No I, Johnson trolling. I actually think Johnson is a legit pick. Uh. How yep. many of you? Have Johnson banned in your rank games, or Johnson first pick? Uh, put in the comment section now. Uh, <laughs> how many Johnson first pick or bans in your games? Hey, we want to know. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, so you all want to try to play Johnson? You all can watch that we play lah. <laughs> Never really miss my banks. <laughs> 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 so okay, so today right before I go to the match part, uh, will be our learning objective for today is uh rose part one where we talk about, you know, mage, assassin, and tank. So in Mobile Legends, there is six classes, right? So the six classes, I uh, don't have to explain more, like, it's just tank, fighter, assassin, then mage, marksman, and support. So each class has a unique way and plays a different roles in the team. So for this meta, uh, we, as you all know, that there, there must be a tank. I mean, you can don't, have, don't need a tank, but you need to have a game plan to work around it. And then you have need to have two fighters at the side to sustain the side lane, laning phase as well as the gang from the mid trio. Then you will have either the assassin or the marksman as the hyper carry role to be the only late gamer or one of the late gamer to you know dish out the most amount of damage in the team during the engage. And as well as you will have this mage and support role where they'll be in the support role. La. Both of them are more of the support right at this meta. But you also can play mage in the terms of a uh, uh, carry role or someone that you gain a level 4 power spike and you try to rush level 4 then from there you try to slow down their hyper carry farm and if that works, I think one two two is viable. La. But not many teams allow you to kill the hyper carry as most of the time there is 3 at mid and you are only 1 uh, one mage and a tank at mid and it's very very hard to kill a hyper carry because most of them now is quite s- slippery they are either like like Ling, they are like Lancelot they are like uh, Hellcurt 
so all these assassins are very slippery unless you, you guys are talking about like you know granger or carry then it is slightly easier to kill compared to uh assassins like uh the slippery assassins uh. so all these um uh, we will try to talk about the majors first for today then in majors there will be talking more about like some of the support majors more than the hyper carry majors because hyper carry majors right now is not really on the meta and we don't want to go through so much at this stage as now is the currently 131 meta so more of the support then we'll be talking also about the assassins where the assassins are the hyper carries or like you know the side lane cushions things like that uh, all these are still viable so we'll be talking about that and for the assassin part right uh jason will be talking about most of the uh things from his own opinion and how how he can play you can play the assassin well in the early game in the uh, late game what are the roles you need to do what are the objectives inside so yeah then when we comes after the assassin we'll be talking about the tank where i myself will try to explain a little bit further on like tanks like there is like you know the sustained tank like Baxia, then there's like the CC tanks like Kufra and as well as like you know the those uh, high damage tanks like Grok so uh, please stay tuned for all those that is around here already so for y'all uh, like y'all should know now by now that skins give away uh. so please please go and you know do whatever it takes to earn the skins the skin is very easy to get uh. yeah you want the skins yeah yeah I also want Same the skins skin. yeah Where's mine? Yeah. Why you all get? I don't get. Yeah. yeah. You see, resurgence people also don't have. Can you all? For you guys. Yeah. You all need to do the way. Just take it lah. Just abuse it. It's easy to get one. Huh? Okay. So, we shall move on to the next slide. Okay. So, for the first one we'll be talking about is the mage. So, during the mage, the learning objective, right? So, we'll be covering these five parts. So, what is the mage attribute? So, such as like mage attribute. Is it tanky? Uh, does it do a lot of damage things like that so those are the attributes and how should we you know use it in the team la? like when you should pick it like it's there are so many types of majors so we will try to explain or when you all got questions in the q a we will try to answer you all la. so secondly what are the what what should be the objective as a mage so for majors there are a lot of objectives and but then you have to know that as a mage your hp is very low so any any assassins or fighters when he went down towards your your skin like like you're in the close combat right most of the time you will die because of your hp your defense the attribute is very low very squishy very easy to get kited by them so what you need to do to you know uh satisfy your objective as a mage okay so for the third part is how to deal the maximum damage for specific uh, majors so for some majors right there's actually some combos you can you know use and all these combos later on we'll try to give it to you all and those are usually the meta picks right now and obviously we won't be giving you weird weird hero la, like Eulora or like uh, Kagura actually Kagura quite good la. Hey. Hey, maybe God <laughs> or, <laughs> someone here has been using Kagura Kagura, so <laughs> hey, Kagura man there so yeah la. so all these maximum damage combos we'll try to explain more and hope you all can use it in ranked games and you know reach to mythic glory easily la. because i know now tough, tough times a lot of belmont picks right out there right and some johnson picks hey speaking of weird mage and johnson right question from one of our viewers here from pupu chen oh pupu chen uh, pupu chen asks johnson good with all that or not still means oh. that it was good last time yeah it was good so is it good still i think with uh the the odette can be your girlfriend someone that who don't play mobile legends well <laughs> and you can be the johnson player because in the johnson odette combo is just the johnson being the 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 person that needs to control the game so the johnson drive to there you can just shout to your girlfriend or boyfriend hey press ulti then game is over it's either it's either you can kill uh, like the three or two people over there or you got killed lah basically maybe a gato can just jump into your johnson bank then things will change mm -hmm. so to answer your question uh odette johnson i think is very good still still still, still viable. very good still viable mm. if your johnson player is good like you know uh, hey, 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 hey. victor like mr v mr v, uh. Uh, mr. v. Best. 
or your Odette Odette player doesn't have to be good but your Johnson player good like Mr. V then I think it's good <laughs> yeah I think I think you all can try out and win a lot some of the ranked games because the Johnson Odette combo doesn't have a lot of weakness and yeah they fulfill the tank role as well as the the mage role la. the the team fight is very strong okay okay so later on then I'll answer and for the next uh, objective will be my skills kept missing and unable to hit so what should I do? So there are actually some solutions if let's say your skills kept missing and what are the reasons that why your skill keep missing? There must be a reason, right? So when I watch LY4 stream, have you watched LY4 stream? Always, always. Yeah, when when I watch LY4 stream, he has been using oh. FASA, you know, like when the viewers <laughs> give him his FASA. So uh now, now you know why he is a marksman player. Yeah. So why he auto attack. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so he likes to all, AA a lot. So ah. why he AA a lot because it's just tapping. So regarding FASA, this kind of advanced player advanced heroes, <laughs> right? Uh, uh advanced heroes. Uh I will I will let you guys know what are the better things to do instead of that. Like. If you watch our stream, then the way he stream when he press his spells, right, you'll know there's something wrong with it, why he keep missing. So yeah la. so th- these are just some of the examples on it la. So the last one which is when should I use the different type of mage and overall what are my primary role as the different types of mage? So uh within this mage role right there's actually also a, a subcategory role for mages which is the combat mage. Combat mage is something like you know Valia or the go in stay in front and want to fight you that kind and you have the farish mage like you know Fasa, Kagura, they always stand behind but let's say the opponent managed to stick to your Fasa right chances are your Fasa will die and those big ultimate mage so what are the big ultimate mage which are also uh, the not popular ones in Mobile Legends la, because in the early game they are weak and secondly they are quite close combat la, actually so uh, the big ultimate mages are something like you know Eudora uh, all the not so strong mage so but their ultimate can you know change the game sometimes lah so regarding that i won't really recommend you guys to use the big ultimate because they are currently one of meta two very easy to kill three uh need some experience to grow before it, its power spike is increased lah so for now the meta will be actually the combat mage as well as the farish mage okay so anyway all the mages right uh, since this guy is a mage and I'm also a mage in my previous game, so we have a uh, slight knowledge on this mage role and we'll try to share the mage category in terms of our opinions. Sometimes uh, whatever we say may be a bit different, but I mean you can just hear both sides and then go with whichever is more convenient for you or whatever is more suitable for your playstyle. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So you got anything you wanna you know say or no more no more Jason in? Jason Yin has always been up, but got some questions from our fellow viewers asking about some mage viability la. Oh, okay. Uh, so first we have one question from Ioniet. How is Alice? Uh, what is she classified under? What mage? I think Alice will be categorized under the combat mage slash the big ulti mage. Reason being, he always needs, she always needs to fight. Secondly is without his ultimate, it is very hard for him to go in and change the game around. So yeah, so not not okay. Just to clarify, uh, one one of the hero doesn't mean it's more category to one of the sub category. There may be two category that fits that major's role. So yeah la, So it is still a okay hero for Alice, but Alice is still a late consider a mid game hero and requires uh, some farms for his passive. So uh, re- don't really recommend. But if you are very good at it, go ahead and use it for your rank games lah. If you are lemon. Yeah, if you are lemon. If you are lemon. Yeah. Play every mage. If you are sing? Sing ah. Uh, play Gushet. Uh, if you are sing, play Gushet. <laughs> if, if you are, are lemon, lemon, play Alice. Uh, uh. I think lemon also play for a miss. Yeah. So if any you are mage. lemon, yeah. play any mage. <laughs> okay. okay, let's move on to the next slide. Oh. Okay. So for the mage attributes role, so firstly, mage is very squishy. Uh, mage within two skills, yeah, most likely dead. And secondly, but then the mage uh, have high burst damage. So most of your spells, you are able to dish out a lot, a lot of damage. That's why in the past, right, uh, the one two two meta is so viable is because the mage 
most of the time when he reaches level 4 and when he casts his spells right usually it will usually kill one or two of the heroes depending on the role again because some is the single target ma, and some is those like you know uh, aoe kind so it depends again so but usually all of them are under the high burst damage so for the third part which is usually required setup so you're talking about it right most majors are like let's say Fasa, kagura right if they don't have the setup for them it is very unlikely they can deal the maximum amount of damage in a professional scenes or even in a high tier rank games because reason being let's say i'm playing a fasa and i want to throw my first skill all my combos first skill second skill ulti 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 and all my ulti all must land usually if you play in a high games or high rank games it's very unlikely they will let you just uh ulti four times let you cast the first and second spells right so in order to do that you might need a setup hero which later i'll move i'll, I'll explain to you all the tank part and setups are usually from tanks so without a tank uh, mage is very unlikely to dish the maximum damage for mage unless you say uh, the your hp is low and then the opponents really really want to kill you and then move forward and then not determine whether if the damage can clear off you uh. so very very low chance you can dish out all the maximum damage so what you requires is good setup very you all need to know that and also uh mage for its attributes it clear away fast uh reason being almost all the mage at level 1 level 2 or level 4 their spells are usually aoe like fasa it has a second spell which can just uh deal half hp towards all the crit waves or things like you know god god has the you know things that put on the floor and then deals damage but as times goes by this kind of thing so almost all majors have all the clear wave blah. and i think it's only about five percent or i think only Valia, selena can't really clear wave but almost all of them clear so yeah so regarding mobility right it de really depends on hero but usually right when they manage to stun one of what um, they manage to stun you and you has no purify right you are most likely going to die lah, in that scenario especially when they come up close unless you are a Gushan or someone like you know uh, Alice where you can have some chances to run and also kill them back with like you know when you bought a concentrated with a Gushan then things like that you can you know come back with the game but if you are like let's say playing uh, Selena then I am pretty sure once you got stunned you are most likely going to die lah. yeah so well so afterwards then it comes to skills so for attributes for mage right usually requires to aim you can't tap your spells so the only few heroes that i can think of for tapping is you know lunox i can't really think of anyone other than lunox so if you are good at tapping and not good at aiming but mage is your role and you don't want to you know train how to aim right you can actually use lunox ah. or even hari fari is okay as well so but then all those all those heroes are requires uh some farm whereby you think about Valia, Selena, they don't really require any farm at all nah, it's just level 2 and you run it down, kill like 3 or 4 people so yeah mm. yeah, anything you wanna add on? to your running on uh, I think clear fast uh. okay, so as a mage in the meta now right very important to have fast wave clear okay and also you must be very ready to escape that's why heroes with good escape and good wave clear are very in the meta. So if you are thinking of picking up a hero, right, can consider wave clear and uh, some uh, escapes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. But Valia and Selena, I think, uh, are very good because they offer you a lot in the early game also. Uh, so also can pick up. Uh. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we shall move on. Mm. Very insightful thoughts. <laughs> 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 all asking the questions I uh, can ask related to the topic uh, so yes. what are they asking uh, ask me single or not ask me uh, who I voting for <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you all ask related to the mage category we answer questions uh, for this uh, segment yeah, all yeah. this uh, we answer at the back uh, you want to know I married or single later I tell you uh, uh, uh. I give you my number and I tell you Oh, wow. uh, but you must be a girl I don't even have his number okay <laughs> so 
uh, we shall start with the mage core because there's not much to say regarding mage core. So what should be the objective as a core mage? So something like a Lunox or Esma. So right now the meta right, Lunox as Esma most of the time they will be at the side lanes. They won't be really in the mid lane. But also because when you're in the side lanes right, you can't really maneuver around and gang the two side lanes. So most of the time you'll try to get level four during the side lane. And then you'll try to, you know, burst the opponents with someone helping you. So let's say you're playing a Lunox and you want to burst like, uh, let's say, Tamos. What you might need in that scenario might be your mid tank, which could be a Lolita or could be a Kufra. Telling that person, hey, come, come and gang for me. Just need one of your stun. Then from there, you can all in the Tamos and, you know, uh, clear, clear it and get the kill. But if, let's say, you're clearing the Tamos by yourself, then recommend for you is to always stay in the light mode for Lunox because uh, when you're playing the side lanes, most of the time the trio mid might come and gang you instead. And staying in the light mode without your team coming over can also assure that your lane's towers will always be there and you won't die because there is always creep waves for you to heal back your HP. So it's like a win-win-win scenarios, but you only can kill when there's someone coming over to your lane. Otherwise, if you are playing like an asthma for comage, uh, you can actually go do more things such as like you can actually try to contest 1v1 fight with him because if you understand Lunox well at the side lane now as the comage, you can actually win some of the heroes uh, out, out there like you know uh, Uranus if let's say the Uranus isn't that strong or you can even win like Leo Mod. actually almost all heroes you want you, you can win but uh, when the opponent come and gang you and manage to get a kill out of you, right, for that one time, most of the time you will lose from there. So getting getting away without any death is also considered a win for asthma, things like that. So must also understand a bit of your hero. Lah. Then secondly is uh, you have to roam together with your tank and prevent opponents from getting objective easily. This uh, point, right, is actually for the... Uh, one of the one two two setup where the old times where the mage and the tank always roam together, yeah. So if you are still playing one two two in the low tier ranks or like you know epic legends or even in the mythic games, there's still one two two. Go ahead and play if it's your comfort. If your whole team there's a marksman that likes staying at bot lane like LI four, then go ahead do that. But uh, try to roam with your tank because uh the mid lane is not easy. It's gonna be two v three, and try to roam towards the lane that the trio is not going to and inform the team the lane that the trio is going to because they are most likely going to abandon that tower or like you know pre pre to, to defend the tower with your life lah. so try to avoid those big fights then try to take some skirmishes with your tank then i think that is okay for one to two setups lah. so in order to so you all need to know don't try not to fight the 2v3 because you will never really win the 2v3 as as like you know one tank and one mage yeah, so the last thing for the core mage is let's say you are playing Lunox, you are playing Asthma, like Harif, right? Don't get caught by your opponent tank in front of your face because in the 1 2 2 setup, you are considered the second highest net worth and most of the time your power spike is at level 4. So if you get caught in the early game, uh, most of the time you can't really get any advantage out in the early game. Then without getting early game setups for your team, uh, the net worth goes even most of the time you'll lose out to 131 because the next power spike will be the opponent where the hyper carry managed to get one item up and snowball from there so this is one of the things that I realized in 122 versus the 131 setup like. so yeah anything you wanna add? Okay, so for since you're talking about core mage now right so why people don't play 122 now because 122 is a bit risky la. like Kisby mentioned before if you don't do well in early game you probably lose to the hyper carries uh, once you play 1-2-2. Two, two. So there's a question from one of our viewers here. He asked about, uh, I think he asked about why uh, Lunox or Asthma can go to the side lanes. So you want to explain on that? Why Lunox and Asthma can go to the side lanes? You don't want to explain? Okay, sure. I'll you explain. want to hear your voice. So, okay, so for Lunox and Asthma, why they can go to the side lane uh, is because they have very high sustain. They can beat fighters. And once they get four, right, they can do a lot of things as side laners. They even win like maybe your strongest uh, side laners like what Tamus, uh, uh, maybe what else is strong at side lane now? Uranus. Uh, Uranus cannot win. Uh. <laughs> Esmer can go even. Uh, 
Asthma can go even in weariness. Okay. Yeah. So I think why Lunox and Asthma so power at the uh, side now is they don't require any buff. They go there, relax, AFK, and then later they get their power spike, kind of join a fight. And they s- don't eat up your hyper carry farm. So Lunox and Asthma very viable at Silence at the moment. Just get your four, relax, and then join a the fight later. Don't even need to take out farm. Powerhouse ready. The best. Mm. Okay, yeah. I hope that's answer your question uh, for offline majors. Uh. Mm. Well okay. done. Jason in. Uh. Hashtag, hashtag. Hashtag, Jason in. Uh, <laughs> who you want out? Uh, you hashtag who you want out. Uh. Uh, hey, don't hashtag me out. Uh. <laughs> hey, continue. Okay, so let's move on. So for now, we'll be talking about the support mage. So what should be the objective as a support mage? So they are currently the powerhouse uh, meta picks right now would be the Selena, Velia, Luo Yi. Uh, there are also some uh, support, but it's not really a mage, like, you know, Koopa and things like that. So for those, I'll just throw it aside. Lah, huh? So for now, uh, as a support objective, right, what's the power spike, right, is to know your mage, the power spike level. So for, for the support mage, Selena, Velia, and Luo Yi. Actually, Velia don't really require level 2, but level 2 is just okay. Like, it still can be level 2 and still slightly better. But for Selena and Luo Yi, right, once you reach level 2, you can actually basically do a lot, a lot of things for your team. So for Selena, you can actually uh, arrow into someone and actually get a first blood out of it. But for Velia, maybe your power spike is actually level 1. So what, why level 1? Because from level 1, you can start spamming your Q, uh, your fireball uh, on your opponent, right? And from there, they got kiter, then you will start to clear with the fir- first leaf, the fastest. Secondly, when you go and disturb their blue, right, they can't really come to you so near unless you yourself commit, uh, over commit and walk in front of their face, lah. Then obviously that's your call, that's your fault. So just need to play a uh, distance away, but they are also considered the close combat majors because they are quite near the uh opponent because of the spells range ma. So what you can do is, you know, uh, ensure that you sa- keep a safe distance from there and do this, uh, what professional players always like to call uh, the pullback fights, where the in Chinese they usually say in lata form. So what it does is just, whenever you throw a spells, right, you sidestep backwards, or whenever you throw something, unless you can determine that, oh, he confirmed die, then you go in front and, you know, try to risk it. But if you're not, your understanding towards that hero is quite weak or like you're still trying to train at it, uh, go ahead and test whether you should dive at the right timing. And also at the sec- second time is you try to play the, the pullback spells casting and you know, one day you will get used to how all this support mage works already. So for Serena is level 2, for Velia level 1, it's not really level 2, but level 2 is still good, especially they come to invade your buff. So in, in, in some scenarios, right, uh, Velia is your only options to defend buffs, right? Like your red buff, your blue buff, and you want to use it to defend. You try to give your Velia level 2 and then from there, right? It is very, very hard for them to come into your buff. And most of the time, they will be either like half HP or they are most likely uh, over commit and they, they, they lost 3 of their members while we still survive our buff due to that Velia firewall and the fireball. Lah. Okay, so for Luo Yi, it is also definitely level 2. So actually for Loy level 2 is very important because it requires a set of his combos to trigger his passive unless you can manage to trigger on two opponents <laughs> at, that are you know a uh, noob and they just stick together and keep triggering your passive. In that sense, um, uh, I don't think it's very likely but in some games, in mythic games or in ledger games, I'm pretty sure that your opponent don't know how does Loi works. You know, actually uh, I have some friends in the pro player since uh, that come and ask me eh, during the game, hey what does Loi go do? Uh? So I'm pretty sure legend games, mythic games, they 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 don't know all this Loi is passive. So as for level one right, try to you know split split your first skill which is what is it called? The dispersion. Uh. Dispersion, yes. Uh. The dispersion spells to two different set of heroes and hopefully they walk into each other and give them a good kiss lah. Mm. Yeah, so it is very possible. And I think Resurgence players also also encounter this before and yeah, I got accused at that time. <laughs> I was the one that walked into him. Then as time goes by then, you know, 
like the the game tells everyone, hey, it is not KCP, it's that person, okay? <laughs> so there's only five of us, and you know, you all can make a guess in the comment down below, lah. Yeah, maybe you correct. Uh, the management will give you some skins. I'm not very sure. <laughs> yeah. So for the second point is, you roam objectively and ensure able to put peer pressures on their roaming. So like I said, when just now when you're playing the Valia, you want to you know, uh, make sure that the opponent cannot roam their roam around easily. I have said this in the last workshop as well. So I am stressing this. So when you're playing the support mid strike, right? please please don't let them just roam around itself without putting without making them lose their HP because by doing so right uh, they don't give you enough respect it, it's like when you when you work for okay I don't, don't go, go to the working life area it's quite stressed about, about the working life so just don't don't put just don't let them walk around so easily in the map lah because uh, they will have more visions and when they got more visions they will most likely know where you and your hyper carries is at that point of time because they have already cleared like maybe half of their map things like that already so uh the other point would be don't overcommit the pressure and die i think i have also said this in the last workshop eh? i'm not very sure so this one uh again please when you all want to try to put pressure right try to uh have the gauge have the estimation that hey when i standing here and put pressure i won't die but in the first place when you're training your support mage right most of the time you won't know the how 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 the distance is like. So at first you try die, okay. But afterwards you must know that eh, standing here I encountered death before, so I have to do uh I have to stand further away. Things like that could might be help on you like. So the next will be the vocal on their rotation and HP. So because most of the time you'll be putting uh pressure, right? So most of the time their tanks or their mage or even their marksman by the time you put finish the pressure they are most likely half hp so when they really do that uh, you can actually inform your team hey uh link is half hp or like uh hey grok gonna burn by me until half hp but if let's say you are you are selena right and you're level two and you're confident to kill right then when you kill already i uh, don't go and tell your team hey i kill their grok eh. because your team won't come and clap for you so you just say uh maybe grok down uh, let's go do something else yeah, so this sort of rotation thing and HP thing and support, you know, must try to vocal a bit and do what, what it should be lah, okay? So, anything for you since you're the support mage role for now? Okay, I got around 10 questions ah. I straight away one shot answer all ah, <laughs> with my experience as a support player. <laughs> hey, so now as a support player, support mage player lah, I'll tell you what makes a, a hero viable in the current support meta. First, your hero has to has very good wave clear because you need to help your mid lane to clear the lane. Second, your hero must have enough damage to threaten the opponent. Okay, so your hero must have very high damage at either level 2 or level 4 to threaten opponents. If not, you cannot pick that hero. Third, that hero must have some form of escape. If not, that hero that escape right must have very high burst damage so you can do burst damage before you die. These are three very big criteria now. And also as a support mage, right? Why I only say until level four? Uh? Because usually at level four, yeah, you die. Eh? Because now you level four, the opponent hyper carry level seven. So yeah. that's why every uh, there's very little support mages that are viable now because of this uh, assassin hyper meta. They you level four, they level seven, they just kill you. So your hero, even though you are so under level, right? You must, you must, you must be able to do something to the level seven hyper carry before you die. That's why the amount of uh, support heroes is so limited now. So, and also I get some questions like asking me uh, when I should buy mask as a 1-3-1. One, one. So you weigh the pros and cons with your tank player. La. So you just nice we two here today. Mm. Okay. Sometimes my hero need level 2. Low E, I need level 2. So I will ask my brother to buy first. Uh, then I buy. So if I value, I don't need level 2. Just now you say it right. Value don't need level 2. Mm. So I give him right. I give you the level 2. Mm. You level 2, you do work. Correct. So whichever hero need the level 2 to do work, right? Uh, don't buy the mask first. You hold the mask, you wait for, uh, maybe you clear the wave or you clear the buff first, you get level 2, then you buy the mask. But you must communicate with your tank player to buy the mask. Okay? Mm. And then one more question. Why I so skinny? Because we give all the farm to who? To LY4. Ah, then no choice, right? Then we skinny, right? Yeah. Ah. Even I also lose a bit. <laughs> That's why no you're choice. so skinny. I'm so skinny. Yeah. 
Uh, no choice. Tank player must be big size, right? <laughs> you see all the Mino, all the Grog. Uh, but then I'm tr- I'm don't know I'm not that size yet, so maybe maybe we're changing player soon. Uh, so find a big size player. Uh, usually the support and the tank skinny a bit lah. Uh, the farm we buy mask lah, we wear the mask lah. Then we don't see the farm anymore. Yeah. So the farm only the L Y four can see. Wow, farm. Yeah. Eat all eh, and so we skinny. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's from me. Okay. <laughs> so good good insights from Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the next slides. So this will be one of the example uh, example of how to play Loi. So this is the game one against Romance Goose uh, for Jason itself lah. So for this one right, to summarize it, uh the early game we just tries to invade the raid. While we know that they are going to invade the they are going to come and invade our raid, right? And we can see from here that they don't have a Diggy, they don't have a Urania. So chances are they are going to only have a Haya and Fasa. So as Luo Yi and Kaja, they will make they try to make a risk, a small attempt. On one, defend the buff. Two, putting pressure on the Haya. Three, trying or trying to kill the Haya. So we can watch this part. Ada Louis di level 2 juga. Aku bilang bahaya hati-hati eh selalu di flicker gitu aja tak pakai akan ada first blood. Pasti banget. Itulah kalau misalkan musuh si Even right. professional player did that. That's wow. right. Even professional player did that. Let me show you guys one more time. Okay. Okay. I let me off the off the sound again. Then let me play one more time. Okay. So, so in this part, right? Uh, we are trying to invade the raid. So as usual, right? They will try to come and take away the raid. So when they are doing that, ah, uh, uh, most of the time, you know. What we can do is just to put some pressure and kill it, try to kill it off. But this time around, you see, Jason tried to put a light on Haya and put a dark on Paxia. So this is uh, not just noobs will do one. Even professional players will do. So like I said just now, when Lo Yi at level 1, right, uh, you can just try to put one darkness and one light on two different players. Once in a while, I think you can trigger that point of time. Lah. So you all can try. Even Jason did it on who ah who is that player Ruby Didi and Ace like MPL Ita plays by the way yeah they are they are the <laughs> Myanmar champions eh three so, time champions three time champions three eh. time so like I say ah uh, let me repeat one more time ah uh. Luo Yi first kill ah uh, when you trigger the light and the dark with your passive right it will do a very high amount of damage and uh some CC. So even pro players will get triggered by this. I'm pretty sure you go rank games, you will easily trigger uh the opponent. Especially if you go rank games, right? You queue until LI four. I tell you. Hey, hey. I thought you asked me, I guess. Hey, sorry, sorry. You queue until LI four. You try to do it. I tell you, <laughs> wonderful, easy, easy MMR for you guys. Really, really, not joking. Eh? Hashtag low E first pick, right? Yeah, low E first pick, ah. Eh, a bit I want to touch on on this lah. Why I was able to do this play lah? Because just now got someone ask me the question lah. Why I buy uh why when to buy the mask? Because this one my brother KZP never buy. Eh, buy the mask at level one, yes. so I can get the level two. So just now he touched a bit on the level two power spike mage right. So why the some heroes need the level two? So this is exactly why I need the level two. If I don't have the level two here right, the higher won't die lah. Mm. So yeah lah. So this is why sometimes you need to give your mage the level two spike. That's all he need. He need the level two. He win you the game. Then after the whole game, you don't need to give him anything, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So even you think about it, ah. So so after the level two conversion, right? Maybe then it will comes to a point where you communicate with your tank who should take the level four. So you can co- put your comments down below. Who do you think should take the level four? Atlas or Loi? Because by within a few uh takes of the mass goes right. Most of the time, their net worth will be around the same again. So it's just who will try to get the level four first. So okay lah, but if you all maybe get right, maybe you all will get skins lah. I'm not very sure. This one you need to ask the admin on uh. the on the chat. Okay, so let's move on. So for mage right, how to deal the maximum damage for specific mages? So firstly, read your hero skills properly. Okay, 
So now right right now right, I want you all to take out your phone, go into Mobile Legends. Actually, I wanted to ever advertise my phone, but I think the admin don't want us to lah. Oh yeah, I, so we cannot we cannot advertise. My, eh, eh. I just show them my Mobile Legends can. Ah, uh, can can can. Uh, this uh. is my Mobile Legends. Uh. Uh, what phone I using? I won't say much, lah. Uh. Okay. You all yourself know what phone I'm using, right? Oh, you see, you drop down the this thing, right? Uh, yeah. This is my mobile legends. I want you all to go into mobile legends now. <laughs> okay, go into custom game. A uh, new phone, by the way. A uh, new phone, new phone. <laughs> okay, so you go into custom game. How you all get to custom game, right? Follow here, uh. custom game. Go to practice mode. Okay, practice mode, ah. Uh. Now you try the combos that are on the screen, okay? Okay, see my phone, ah? Uh? Okay, then you select the heroes and you try the combos. Okay, go. Mm, okay. So for all these majors, right? Uh, firstly, I know you all like, wow, tired of reading skills. And I playing game, man, why I should, I should read skills? I tell you, a lot of profession, professional players or even uh, better players out there, they don't read skills. Why? Because they think by experiencing it, it is enough. So you all try to read the skills, okay? Try to read each individual the passive the first skill the second skill most of them they are interlink what what do i mean by interlink means like maybe the first skill can you know treat must combo with the second skills and the second skills combo with the passive something like that so all these are interlink and for all these majors combos right uh i will try to i'll re- I'll say one time because i i think you all should go and try first Maybe I can take a screenshot for you all to post and then you all can try, you know. Especially for those that sign up for the, you know, Q&A one, I will give you all, all this luck, huh? So for maybe like Valia, how many Valia fireballs can be used in one combo? Actually, if you triggers all perfectly, uh, all, all of your fireball hits, right? I think you can trigger up to four, five, six, six times, at least a good five, six times. But that, that shows that within the five six times, right, all you must hit because the passive will uh the fireball is to trigger it will reset the passive the cooldown because of like you know hitting the enemy hero. If you don't hit the enemy hero, right, it don't reset, then you will lose one stack and you can't do all this combo anymore. So like for example fireball, right, you go to practice camp now, you go to the damage board, then you go try you try you get level four, then you try fireball. Then you press your ultimate immediately. Your second fireball, which is the enhanced one, will be resetted. Okay? So when it is resetted, right, it, you can straight away cast again. And when you cast, right, immediately you use your Searing Torrent. So by then, uh, second, Searing Torrent, by the way, is the W, the second skill of Valia. So by, by then, right, most of the time, the, the hero that you're casting on, it will be stunned already. So at that point of time, you can use your fireball again due to the animation of the steering torrent. I have tested this. Then, uh, after the first fireball, right, you wait for around 0.5 seconds or 0.6 seconds to one second. So I just say uh, one second lah. Uh, then you cast again, right? And if that hits, or if even if that misses, right, your ulti will immediately reset and so does your fireball. So if you think about it, right, you can actually cast around six fireballs in an engage while you staying alive. But obviously, when you're casting all these fireballs, you have to be alive lah. And in order to do that, I don't know if you should tap first or you should drag your maps or like, you know, drag your spells because all this is really up to the players. And preferably, uh, just ensure that your fireball hits. Uh, I don't have any recommendation whether you tap or you drag your spells. So that is the one of the combo for Valia. I think this damage will instant give uh, one of your tank, uh, one of the fighters out there if you can manage to use this combo as a support. So y'all can try. Then for the Selena, right? Selena is actually quite okay. It's just when you put a wall in front of you. This is for the easy way, ah. Uh. Later he want to explain to you the advanced one. Yeah, but I don't want to show you advanced one because I also use this sometimes. So for Selena, if you really you know clutch in the team fight, uh, you put a, you got a wall in front of you, right? You throw an arrow, and when the arrow even hits the opponent, right? You press your ultimate. And then when you press the ultimate, you should press your Q. Then when your arrow hits and the marks triggers on the opponent, you can AA on him. And when the when the Soul Eater triggers where it was gain two more charges, you use your W, which is Garrett. Then you ultimate again. Then you put a ward on them, you throw an arrow again. And all this will 
uh, take within about uh, the timing of how you hit your arrow lah. So after you throw your last arrow right, uh, you will need around 2.5 seconds to 3 seconds before it changes, before this whole combo thing set up again. So obviously you need mana, secondly you need to land your arrow lah, if not you cannot use all this combo. So this is for the Selena one, and I think just now you want to mention something about the Selena combo right? I think Selena combo a lot of type lah. For the advanced players uh, like ourselves uh, advanced players uh, we bef- we throw the arrow first, then we put the ward in front. So the arrow will fly through the ward and then hit. And then usually for advanced Selena players, uh, we will never use our first skill which is the claw to trigger the marks. We mm. always use the <coughs> dash to trigger the marks. So you hit the arrow, you get one mark, use the dash first to consume the mark, reset your dash, claw the person, your second uh, second mark also use the use the dash also. So all three marks must use the dash to reset. So you can dash a total of uh, four. four times. Four, four. And within the four times, you can claw him two times. Mm. That's the advanced Serena combo la. Uh. Uh, if you we, if we offline now you beside me I hold your hands teach you how to do <laughs> but now you just go custom imagine a bit and try to do yeah okay. just play around with the uh. hero then you'll realize that actually all combos works then see which one really works well for you and more convenient for you then go ahead and use that one okay so yeah so the other combo will be actually the Loi where dispersion where is the young there's two modes right there's the ying and yang so for that you can just use your Q to trigger actually for low E it's very simple it's just your Q you, your Q must be yang your W which is the rotation should be in then you you use it on the same person it will trigger the passive then for the other one is just the other way around the f- your first skill is in, then your rotation is W. Then same thing will happen. So for low, it is it is very, you know, quite it's easier to combo and afterwards it's just you know spamming your spells and try to land and not dying lah, correct? Yeah, low E, actually low E ah, you depends on your you depend more on your enemy being bad than yourself being good. Mm. Cause all you can do is land the spell. But the enemy has to be stupid enough to come and kiss each other for your yin and yang to work. So low yi at the moment depends on how bad your opponent is for it to work. Mm. So low yi relatively new hero. People yeah. still don't know how it works. Yeah. So first pick low yi in your rank. Anyhow throw your spell. As long as hit can already. Opponent suddenly stick together. Gonna suck. They don't know what happened. You also don't know what happened. Yeah, but then you will work. Pray for it. You pray for it. Yeah, pray yeah. for it. Pray for them to walk in and then you know. you. Oh, you see? You see, I pro or not? You tell your friend that. <laughs> yeah, you. You're not intentional, also yeah. say, hey, see that one, I do one. Yeah, I do. No choice. No they choice. have to say you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. So, this is one of the examples of the bad tapping skills, okay? Uh, shout out to Sana for helping me. Maybe I should make so, myself a flame. Basically, right, what you do is you tap your spells. And when you tap your spells and your opponent walks, right, most of the time it don't really triggers. And when if it walks into the bush, ah, it, your your second spell or f- your first spell it won't hit one, so let's let's see again the last part okay. So at this part ah, you you all notice like when he walk downwards and I tap it's gonna miss right. I never drag. Then when I press out T on to use the wave it just never walk into the bush and I can't see him so he anyhow throw. So this is one of the bad example of tapping skill. So I need to tell you all how you all need to tap. What in which scenario? So as a valier, right, the only scenarios that you are available to tap uh, is when the opponent is chasing you. So let's say he is chasing me, I can just tap. I tap all my spells. He will still be chasing me, I just keep tapping because it will be at a very close range. So tapping when they are chasing you or at a very close combat range, right, it is viable. But don't use it often because when it comes to long range, you will have the habit of tapping as well. So uh, I've learned not to tap so much. Uh, I am someone, someone a drag player. But in a way, when when it comes to this kind of scenario, I was still dragging as well. So there is a uh, pros and cons. But yeah lah, see what you what you prefer. So yep. So we shall go next. So this is one of the few questions that people always ask. Like my skills kept missing and unable to hit. What should I do? So firstly, don't use so much of your setups and not use heroes that tap much, such as Lunox. This kind of heroes uh recommended you not to use if you want to train your skill shots because there's no skill shots for Lunox right there's only the you know the, the one that made it on the floor that W that is the only skill shot so other than that 
this hero is more of like tapping and timing then try to use heroes like Fasa, Selena, Velia and try to drag the spells and release before hitting don't tap ah. you like I said you only tap when there is set up or when there is you know they are coming to close combat but if let's say you are training how to uh, learn skill shots or try to improve on your skill shot right you need to firstly anticipate the opponent next movement and release your skills in a predicted location so let's say I'm playing rank I'm playing against this uh, I'm a I'm a Valier I'm playing against this tank player so at level 1 I will have mid name Mary. so when I throw my first spell at him uh, I will know how he how, how is his uh, walking pattern and what is his patterns already so from there I will know oh this guy plays side step instead of front and back then I will next time throw my second time when I want to poke him right I, want to, I will usually throw at the left or the right side of the opponent's tank so this is one of the things that you all can look out for and also uh, if you all are playing the low tier games they always tend to walk front, front or back then for the high tier games like the mythic glory and above right they usually tend to sidestep you or players that know how to play because it's pretty hard to hit a sidestep player especially when you are tapping so if you're able to recognize the player's habit it's a very advantageous to your skill shots lah. so this is one thing you can you know do so is there any questions mm, question now people ask you what does dragging your skill mean so when when you're holding your 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 phone right so instead of immediately cast the spell by tapping it you hold it you hold it and then you aim it yeah something like that hold you, it, you hold it and then, and then you, you aim, aim it, it. Yeah. you don't do this yeah you don't do this this is yeah, no, this no, one no, no. you can find in ly stream this one you go to silver rank warrior yeah. warrior this one warrior this one oh. see you at mythic glory see you in fpl Wow. Uh, well, it, you could right, be the right. next <laughs> yeah you could be the next so these are the small little things that you all should be uh, be, be aware lah. Mm. yeah so okay we shall move on so this is the last part of mage so when should I use the different type of mage and overall what are my primary role as the different types of mage so like I said there is combat mage far range mage and big ultimate mage so the examples of the combat mage is like Valia, Loy, Selena which are the most meta if you really don't play mage much right go and try these three heroes it will be first benefit your team the most second it will benefit the early game the most third it will make the opponents be annoyed the most compared to all this in the early game and if you scale well in the late game you also can dish out a lot of damage so the second more popular ones are the far range mage which includes Sicilian, Chang Er, and Kagura. These kind of heroes clear wave very very fast. When it comes to defending the in heaps, ah, they are usually the number one that clearing all this wave. And if you are able to drag the game long enough, ah, these are the heroes you need to look out for if you have a game plan with it. Like, hey, you know we are going to lose the early game. Go ahead and pick one of these three. Uh, even Fasa as well, they are considered far range range. They will scale above when they are at least level 8. They will skill their their damage potential will be around level eight onwards. Then as time goes by, more items goes in. They are the they are the strongest. Like they can just you know one two spells and the whole wave is gone. And so far, this has been proven that uh in ranked games, in order to win the defense, they will usually use the far range mage. Even in one of most of our losing games lah. So if you have not watched, yeah. So for the third one will be the big ultimate mage we are the, which is the unpopular ones and but i would say if this is your primary role you like to play god the most you like to play aurora all this the most they are okay to play but please be reminded that you need level 4 in order to dish out the maximum damage in this kind of heroes if you are only level 2 or level 3 your hero damage output is very low compared to the other 6 on top that i, that I mentioned just now so Try to find a way to get level 4 and try to go around and give get some kills with it and it will be good if you can do so lah if you can you know as a god you kill someone but it is very unlikely uh, so try to play around with it and then you know try to play the more meta one lah I, I really recommend that because all those are really the reason why they win those competitions right right yeah yeah mm. that's why rq win us right <laughs> okay, la, then let's not talk about it. So we shall move on. So 
Uh, anything regarding Mitch, uh, y'all, if you all really still want to ask, right, y'all can uh, say now, but Jason won't be going to reply y'all and will be replying to y'all in the Q&A uh, session later on or something. Uh. So for now, we shall move on to the Assassin. You want to talk about this? Okay, so Assassin, my segment. Yeah. Yeah, this one you give me, I, I shall read the comments okay. for you. So as an Assassin, What's the attribute as an assassin? What are the objectives of an assassin? Uh, how to maximize your damage? Uh, when should I use different type of assassin? And uh, what's my primary role as an assassin? I'll go through all these uh, objectives while we go through the slides. Okay, so we go next. Oh, so fast. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is... Uh... Okay, at first, uh, I'll go through the attributes of an assassin hero uh, for you aspiring assassin players out there. Uh. So as an assassin hero, so as the name suggests, you have very high damage, you can you know kill anyone you see, but your cons is you are very squishy, uh, usually you are very weak when the opponents stick together. Uh, assassin usually requires the player to have a very high skill cap. Uh. So if you can master assassins, uh, chances are you are at mythic 1000 points and above already. I, trust, I tell you, trust me. Uh, assassin players uh, with the instinct to kill uh, will be 1000 points and above easily because you can solo carry the game. You can always take out uh, high threat targets by yourself and escape and usually very nice one. Uh. Okay, we move on. So, so be assassin can join RSG? Of course. Uh. Oh, wow. uh, if uh. you master assassin, 1k or 2k uh, mythic glory, uh, maybe next time we got recruitment, uh, come. Uh, oh. We take a look at your assassin. If we see you nice, you come. So who get replaced at? See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for now, right? Uh, questions. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, Jason say before that in sync stream, Eudora good can stun link. Is it true? Ah, uh, Eudora. I remember that game, uh, The Eudora, the troll pick. Ah, uh. I don't want to say so much, but uh, the Eudora, you pick anything with a stun also can, right? Yeah. <laughs> but. Eudora works lah, can stun the scenes. Basically, assassin, as you can see from the slides lah, you are very weak against team that uh, stick together. So, why is it weak against team that stick together? Usually, the team stick together, right? Mm. There are people with uh, crowd control in the team. Mm. So, you meet things like maybe Kufra, you meet uh, Eudora, you meet Aurora. Before you even go in, right, you cannot stun already. No matter how skilled you are, you cannot play that. Because it's a point and click uh, crowd control for you. So... I mean, it works. Uh, maybe in some games, it will work. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, train assassin if you want to join resurgence. I think you want to join anything, you train assassin also can. Yeah. Uh, you're so solid. Your assassin so good. Uh. Every team, you don't need to join. <coughs> Every team looking for you. But you all need to know, uh, because assassin is just maybe this meta. It mm. could be, maybe next meta is not in the meta anymore. Mm. And assassin really, really requires a lot, a lot of games played. Uh. I I I seen like players that play like three hundred games and not good at it with assassin, so yeah, watch some of the competitions out there that you think that that assassins uh you can learn from, like maybe you can watch the uh RQ versus resurgence in the uh, winner upper bracket, you can watch our falling. Yeah. Move on. He want to cry. Right? <laughs> Never mind. Let's move on, guys. So, okay. Okay, so as an assassin, what is your objective? Uh, like I stressed uh, enough uh, on the previous slide, assassins, uh, as the name suggests, you look for backlines and you assassinate them. So, uh, like just now in the mage, uh, when you talk about mage, right, why some mages are not so uh, in meta right now because of this role right now, this role <laughs> of assassin. So a lot of mages you cannot play because uh, they can just one-shot you straight away. So the very meta assassins now are uh, maybe Ling and Lancelot. They provide you too much damage really. And also their mobility is super high. And then there's like close to no counterplay to them if uh, you are alone. Usually require the whole team to you know catch them. So why are uh, assassins over marksmen in the current meta? Okay. So in the current meta, why assassins are better than marksmen is because in an even game, right? Uh, assassins... Uh, they do more because they can always kill the marksman. If the marksman want to have a chance of winning the assassins, right, he have to overfarm the assassin and he have to avoid them in the early fights. Assassins generally 
have a very early power spike, be it the uh, level 4 or the first item. And then they because of their high mobility, right, they are able to just uh, go to your side lanes and just kill the side, lan side laners just by themselves. They don't usually require a lot of help, like maybe uh, if your marksman wants to get a kill in the early game, he probably needs the help of the support mage or you need the help of the tank to have it, ses uh, have it set up. But then for the assassins, uh, usually you just go to a side lane. Even if the side laner don't offer you much help, if you play it well, you probably can kill the side laner by yourself as well. Lah. So this is the beauty of assassins uh, at the moment in the current meta. That's why if you are a very good assassin player at the current meta, you probably can climb very high rank. Okay, and also assassins uh, generally they can do things by their own. Like I say, they can go to side lanes, they can kill the side lanes by themselves. Not only that, they can also uh, do the jungles by themselves. Also, they can rotate to side lanes or rotate to the jungle by themselves because of their mobility. And also, they also have a... They usually have an inbuilt escape spell. Uh, mm. Basically, all assassins uh, have an inbuilt escape spell for them to you know get out of sticky situation. Like example, if you are running back to mid lane, and then one low E, just first skill, second skill, you usually lose half your life as maybe marksman, right? <laughs> But if you're assassin, maybe you're a landslot, you're going back to a mid lane, the lawyer throw a first skill and a second skill at you, you can just triangle and then just walk out and laugh at his face, right? And then mm. after you walk out, you put one sticker in mode and laugh at his face. Mm. Uh, that is the beauty of assassin at the moment. Or if you pro enough, right? He throw two spells at you, right? You chong his face. Kill chong, him. Uh, you run at him and you kill him, show him who's the boss. Uh, that's why assassin now, I keep saying, the best. Okay. Okay. Any questions for assassins on this slide? Uh, no, they maybe they they are listening. My explanation too well that you all don't have any questions. Uh. uh, not no questions for now, but okay. maybe just uh Jason in soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, thanks, on. thanks. Okay, so as assassins, uh, there are two types to play assassins. Okay, there's the you go in first, you create a lot of space for your team potentially snipe off or make the opponent call low call as in their hyper carry or their mage player uh, make them low and then you get out and then you get back into the fight that is play style number one and then play style number two is the cleanup style where you let your team do all the work and then you come in at the end and clean everyone up okay so, okay so for the first style okay jumping into the fight with uh, one escape spell and run in Okay, so assassins, right? Usually you go into a fight, you might want to save one spell or two for escape if you can. So maybe you are the meta since you are Ling or you are Lancelot, okay? You get in with your first skill or Ling, you jump into a fight and then you go down with your first hit on the, on the squishies. You throw another spell and then you get out with your ulti. So that is the playstyle one when you go in and then you do the maximum amount of damage and then you get out. Okay, in case you go in and then your team cannot follow up, sometimes uh, assassin players, uh, they blood rush. Uh. The blood go into their head. Uh. They think they're very fat, you know. They think they six item ready. They want to go in right? and they see the fasa, the bird there standing there, you know. And that one is a chicken dinner. They go in. They want to snipe the fasa. But the team, uh, the team is at the side of their own river. They cannot follow up. So you must save some spells, uh, to escape or maybe when you go in and then your mechanics fail you miss all your spells maybe you are landslot you try and slide 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 but you miss one creep and then you up and then you want to get out <laughs> and then that's when you need to save a spell to get out lah. and then like i say all the targets that you jump must be a squishy must be either a marksman or a support okay and then this is the first play style for the assassin go in first and then do all the setup for your team like example you go in first and then you save your spells to get out, right? You go in, you make the mage or the marksman low, and then the opponents start to throw all their crowd control on you. you. Use your ulti as link to get out, and then they burn all their things, right? And then your team will jump in, clear them up, right? That's the first play style. The second play style is start the fight uh, with your tank setup. So the tank go in, you know, start the fight, and then your mage support help you make them all low, 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 and then you get in, you do the fight with them, and chances are when you go in the fight with your tank, right, you might lose some HP because usually people will save some spells for you. So you you get yourself low, and then you find the jungle because both, uh, most assassins now buy the jungle blade tier 3, Raptor Machete upgrade level 3. So um, 
when you get low in team fights, right, try and look around the map, see if there's any small jungle camps that you can go and uh, get back your HP, kill the jungle camp quick and come back to the fight. Usually that's what uh, high tier players do. Yeah. And then uh, if you see that you join a fight and the fight is not looking well, uh, you finish the fight, let's say you still got a few spells, but you see the fight is a lost cause, you cannot 1v5 already. With your mobility, faster go to other lane and speed push. Eh? Don't stay don't stay in a fight and try to be a hero. Eh? Go mm. to the side, speed push, and then try and um, uh, create pressure. Lah. Mm. And then, okay, for the assassin playstyle too, right? Wait for your team to uh, do shit and then just go in after that, right? That is a very risky style because usually uh, it depends on how good your team is. So if you are solo queuing, right? If you... You play that style, you wait for your team to go in first before you go in, right? People are gonna score you the, 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 you know, uh, what mm. the people usually score in the rank game uh, if you don't go in. Uh. Uh. So, best to practice the first style. Uh. You go in first, you try and create a lot of space for your team, you get out. That way, the team won't flame you. But if you go in and you die, your team will flame you. Uh, you go in and you die, then people will say, blah, hyper, blah, 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 hyper. Uh, you know what they will score you, I don't need to say. <laughs> <laughs> something 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 <laughs> hyper A something something hyper and then next you know is out uh, uh, out uh, uh, okay <laughs> any questions for uh, assassin playstyles uh, they ask uh, is harsh claws good harsh claws the red color uh, oh the lifesteal uh. uh. I think that hero that item generally not in meta it provides uh, very little stats uh, usually, if an item is viable, it must, it must give you more stats than that. Lah. Mm. Uh, because uh, it just gives you life steal and damage. Uh, not a lot of heroes in general need these two stats. If you need life steal, you need damage, just go endless battle. It gives you more damage. And it gives you a decent amount of life steal. Lah. So to make that item better, maybe they buff the amount of damage where it's... Uh, uh, how to say? The damage is closer to the rest of the item's damage then maybe that item will see some play la. Or, or they can even give some like movement speed CD, uh, attack I don't speed know. CD yeah, yeah, then maybe it will be viable la. if mm. not with lifesteal and damage it's definitely not viable yeah, at the moment not so good la. not so good la. yeah so the other question will be is assassin jaw good in your opinion uh, jaw hit as an assassin is good but he is not a hyper carry assassin he is an assassin at the side lane why is he at the side lane because draw hit don't need items, don't need level. Draw hit only need uh level two is his first power spike and level four is his second power spike. So the assassin hyper carries that we are talking about that need the levels and farm are usually uh, heroes that depend on uh, items and auto attack uh, mm. like Lancelot Link. They really need the items, need the level. So why draw hit at the side assassin is good is because at level two as an off laner, uh, people think like wow off lane you just farm the whole day right? Yep. You don't need to join fights right? Then, but then you as a draw hit you suddenly kill your own lane then you come to me and kill them also then go back top kill him again then the game is just over from there and also he farms the jungle so well yeah, so that's why draw hit is very viable right now yeah, draw hit in <laughs> draw hit draw hit in if so, if the opponent not lemon uh. yeah draw hit in if opponent not lemon if if lemon in draw hit out <laughs> That was the third game. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is one of the example of the video assassins the, the in the early game. Uh. You want to explain regarding this? Like how this link maneuvers and things like that? Okay, so yours uh, can see from the start of the video the link is actually at the top side of the the map, right? And then as the team communicate to him, right, he start jumping down, jumping down, jumping down to the fight, right? This is assassin playstyle number two where the Ling joins the fight after his team help him to set up. Usually the tank or the support mage will help him to set up, right? Mm. So you just come in for the clean up. La. So for those that cannot, haven't seen, I can uh, play again. So you play again, you see the I Ling is at the top. top side of the map. He just start jumping down, jumping down, jumping down. So this playstyle, like I mentioned before, you try and do it in solo queue, uh, probably not happening la, because you are not communicating, right? Mm. But if you are playing with your friends, this is the ideal playstyle for assassins. La. Mm. Usually, assassin players like to see this happen la, because very comfortable for you to join the fight. Like, mm. It's very easy. You don't need high mechanics, high skill. Mm. So, this is playstyle 2. 
later we will touch on play style 1 yeah most of the time in play style 2 usually happens in the early game more often because you are mm. still not farm yet you are still very you are still very thin uh, they are not like ly4 so you, you are still a baby you growing up uh, yeah uh, so you need you need this lah so, you need some setup for you to become fat yeah so when you reach fat ah uh, uh, this is one of the example on a uh, fat link can do so now that oh, you are yeah. fat, uh, you look at play style 1 okay this link play style 1 Okay, he go in first, he creates space for the team, he bait out all the spells from the opponent, he save one escape spell in the form of his ulti, and also his uh, dash, his uh, fly to the wall. So he create this fight for his team, so his team just come in, follow up, then take note uh, that he went to a side jungle to do some healing before he rejoined the fight, and then come in, clear up everyone. So those that never noticed where he went, after he start the fight, right? Maybe you can replay and let everyone see the okay. his small small movements again. Okay. So okay. everyone take note of the link. After he start the fight, right? This is play style one, ah. The you very confident in your mechanics play style. Uh, you go in, you you absorb everything from the opponent. You bait out a lot of spells. You let your team do the fighting. You fly away. You fly to the camp at the top. You get back some HP from the camp. You rejoin the fight. Mm, you so this playstyle is the preferred playstyle for assassins la. In be it solo queue or be it in competitions because this playstyle will really benefit your team the most rather than letting your team start. Yeah. Mm. So but one of the reason why he can do that is also because uh in the early game he is quite farm already. Mm. So when you are fed and you know you are uh like confident in your hero right, you can go for it. Go and you know go and poke them one v five. Then create space for your team. Then afterwards, when your team come over and clear up, right, most of the time it's easy because they are either half HP or most of them they are dead. So it might it could be a four four v four fight or four v three fight where your link is somewhere else, where it is very possible he will fly over and join the fight again, where it can become a five v four. So that's the best play style for assassins. If you all are aspiring to be a assassin player. Be confident in your mechanics. Go in, run it down. Every game, test your limits. Uh, don't test in rank. Test in uh, classic. <laughs> <laughs> test in classic. Uh. Uh, you test in classic, You every game, you just go in and do this. Uh, so even in classic, people score you what? The K word, the A word. Never mind. The F word. Uh, oh, okay. it, it's okay because it's classic. Uh, you you do that. Improve. <laughs> you do that until you're very confident in yourself. You go to rank and then you do that. People don't give you the K, the A, the F, really. People give you the good job, really. Uh, uh, the, the pro link. Send you skin. Uh, the first pick. Uh, As you join Resurgence. Oh. Uh, you can come for the tryout, really. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, move on. Okay, so when should I use the different type of assassins? And overall, uh, my primary role as a different type of assassins, there are a few types of assassins in the meta right now. So I first I touch on the one that everyone may be more excited to know. La, the hyper assassins. Uh, this one, the one that help you, you know, get your rank on. Help you mythic glory on. Okay, so you play Ling, you play Lancelot, you play Haya. What is your objective as this three hero? You want to farm it out the early game. Try and get your level three, uh, level 4. That's when your first power spike. But a bit different for Lancelot and Haya. They still need to scale even after level 4. They need their items. So Haya and Link usually look for uh, small fights or try and get a bit of things on the map before they really grow up after their first big item. Whereas Lancelot, you get level 3, even level 2 is your one of your power spikes already. Usually as Lancelot, right, what you want to do is uh, after you get your first buff or anything, right, if you are fighting an opponent marksman, uh, you might want to consider invading them. Because Lancelot, as a hero, he's a... Uh, He's very strong in the early game, but as the game goes on, right, his uh, effectiveness will keep going down. Uh, Lancelot will keep going down, going down, going down, going down until you cannot see him anymore. Uh, so at first he's here, Lancelot very high one. Then he level 2, wow, still not bad. Level 4, up a little bit. Then level 5, level 6, level 7, level 8, level 9, keep going down. Uh, that is Lancelot for you. Lah. But Ling and Haya, you start at the bottom. You slowly go up. So these are hyper scenes of different gameplay. Uh, but they were these three heroes will definitely carry you the game. Lancelot will carry you from the early game to the mid game. That's when you end the game. Link will carry you from the mid game onwards to the late game with Hayabusa. La. So, 
uh, Link is primarily a first pick, very uh, very mobile. Uh, very how to say, you make mistakes also won't be as punishing because he can always get out. Haya also very mobile, so even if you make mistakes, uh, you can still get out of your life. Lancelot, uh, you make mistake, high chance you probably die. Uh, mm. that's why the effectiveness keep going down. You see, you see. Okay. So <laughs> there are some high damage assassins right now in uh, be it in the meta or not. There are Gushen, Helcurt, and Karina. So for Gushen, nowadays people usually play at the off lane because uh, of this hyper meta. He doesn't fit in, in the mid lane anymore. Because the mid lane, you need something to carry you throughout the game, not just the early game. Gushen effectiveness probably level, you know, four, four to eight, uh, around there. Uh, four to his first item at the back is really not as effective as the current hyper scenes lah. Then you have Helcurt. Helcurt is a how oh, I wanna put it. Helcurt is a hero where it depends on the player. Not everyone can play a very good Helcurt. Everyone can play a Helcurt, but not everyone can play a good Helcurt. So, as a good Helcurt player, right, you must know when to get in, when to on your ulti, and you must play around the vision that the opponent have. So, with the Helcurt ulti, right, you must imagine yourself as the opponent, uh, then you must imagine what they can see and cannot see, and then you have to go around them, and then poke them from the back, <laughs> you know? You go behind the person, and then you poke them. Press uh, then, your ulti. Uh, with your ulti, you give them duck hey, duck, hey, hey. and then go from the back and poke them. That is Helcurt. So... These are heroes with very high damage, but very punishing. Once you, you know, you don't do so well, you're probably gonna get the K, the A from your team, right? Okay, there are some <laughs> roam assassins, uh, usually supports, or maybe in some cases, offlane assassins, like Natalia and Selina right now. Natalia used to be a very good first pick, first ban. Like, every team was first picking it, first banning it, be it ranked game, or be it in the pro scene, in MPL or not. Uh, now, currently, Natalia... Uh, not so much people play it. Uh, you want to explain why Natalia no one play it now? Uh, one of the reason is also because Natalia, a lot of people know how to play against it. Number one, number two is because now a lot of heroes, right? They are very very tanky. It's very very uh, unlikely that Natalia can get a lot of kills and win with it. But if let's say uh, you are Evo's SG, you you recently watched Evo's SG. They like to pick like three supports, right? Wow, I tell you, you pick one Natalia, you can run Wet it down. Ribs, red ribs. Wow. So Natalia, Selina, uh, even Harley, they depends on your opponent. Their picks will matter a lot when you pick this uh, type of Rome Assassins. Because you really need them to pick very squishy heroes. Uh. Even Selina, uh, if opponent is so tanky, right, and you don't have a good target early game, right, chances are you're gonna fall off, and you're gonna be a living ward. Your whole game, you're just gonna ward, 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 ward. Uh, get vision for your team, you know, at the start of the game, do some jungle for your team. Uh, that's your, e- you know, effectiveness as a Selena. Mm. So, all these heroes uh, are very situational. So, they are good against some heroes. They are also bad against certain matchups. So, you must really play a lot of them to see where you will fit them in for yourself. Mm. Mm, for yourself to feel. Mm. Mm. Like he mentioned just now, they are all high skill cap. Mm. So it's not like, uh, e- even though it's a weakness or even though it's a strength to certain hero, like maybe you fight against three support meta, you take Natalia, you mm. also need to learn how to use Natalia well. You cannot just go in blindly and then try to scratch people. Mm. Yeah, most of the time, I think a lot of effort will come out to your Natalia. La, by then. All the K, all the A, uh, you know. Uh, uh. Yeah. So there's questions. If opponent hyper assassin while you hyper MM, mm. Uh, how to overcome when they already dominate the early game? Uh, if you are a marksman and opponent is an assassin and they dominate you like our MPI uh, finals, uh, uh. then chances are you must watch how to come back from a losing game. <laughs> 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 this one, you go back and watch. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go go Google. Uh. Uh, go and Google. Uh. Yeah. This so, one already teach you before. I right? never listen. Yeah. Second question. But Jason test Natalia in compi during MPL. Why teach why teach casual classic? Okay, for me, right? For me, ah, uh, rank game is my test. Whereas MPL is where I usually serious. <laughs> but that game, ah, uh, just nice. I think we fight Geek Fam, right? I uh, think it was Geek the Geek Fam game. Then Eh hey, or is it boss school? I can't remember which one I did. Oh yeah, it's Vasco, it's Vasco, it's Vasco. Either one lah. Both of them have very good Natalia players. So I just picking it as a deny pick rather than a 
I want to play it. Like I will own Revit pick lah. Uh, so from there also we learn lah uh, that mm. don't try hero in compi lah. Mm. In combinations don't try hero. Uh, try in classic ah. Uh. Uh, next time I'll try in classic. Okay. Uh. The other question will be, uh, Harley must farm or not? Harley must farm or not uh. mm. For Harley. Okay, Harley, what you want to farm uh, after level 4? 1 to, one to 4, uh, you farm creeps. Level 4 onwards, uh, you go <laughs> and farm the heroes. You don't farm the hero, they're gonna farm you soon. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, Harley, constantly look for kills. Just buff kill, buff kill, buff kill. You go and go lane and farm, uh, you're gonna get the K, gonna get the A from your team. Right? Mm. Uh, so got one person also asked about Hanzo, but I believe Hanzo is roughly the same as Harley. La. Mm. Yeah, your power spike is very early, so you also need to farm on the opponent. If not, you will get farm. Mm. Yeah. So all the all these hero, you all remember to go and learn la. It's not like you play one two games, you know how to play with it. Maybe Karina la. Maybe Karina. La. Karina five yeah. game yeah. Maybe yeah. Karina five game. The rest I see 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 ya. At least fifty games per. La. Per At hero, least la. La. Per hero. Find one hero that you want to master. Get get fifty to hundred games on ya, and then you are on the right track to being a good assassin player. But yeah. it's not the hero mechanics that you need to train only. You need to train your mindset. You know, your mind must be an assassin mind. Think like an assassin. Uh, you want to strike from the dark. You want to not be seen. You want to get in and get out. Uh, that is as an assassin. Nice, nice, uh, nice. Insightful thoughts. Uh, okay, we shall on. move on. Okay, no more assassin. Uh, Let him take a break. Ah, uh. he talk a lot already. He need to rest. Uh, first time do. If you want to see him more of him. You all need to know what to do lah, huh? Hashtag Jason in. Okay? Jason in until next time we got three uh, three coach <laughs> for you all. Okay? Let's do that, okay? So for now we'll be talking about the tank. Uh so I will talk slightly faster a bit because we do not have so much time, huh? Yeah, uh, we talk too much, eh? Right? Okay? So firstly, what is the attribute as a tank? What should be the objective as a tank? How to die for the tank? Uh as a tank you must die for your team one. You don't die for your team, ah. Uh, Actually, when I was playing in the MPLI, I had zero death or, or I have the lowest death la, all the time. Yeah, so then you are not, maybe I don't fit to uh, be a tank. You're la. not a tank, eh, yeah. Yeah, I always have zero to two death. If I you zero to two why. tank, then you are putting the tank in a more. Eh. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. This guy, this yeah. guy. You all can hear the puns. Ah. So, the four, how to set up for your team. <laughs> Setting up for your team is very important for your tank. If you don't set up for your team, you don't die for your team. You don't deserve to be a tank already. So, lastly, what should I use the different type of tank and overall what are my primary role as the different types of tank? So, there are three types of tank. The CC tank, the damage tank, and the sustain tank. So, in different kinds of drafting or different kinds of concept, right, each individual have its own advantages and disadvantages. So, for example, a damage tank might only have one CC, while a, da- a CC tank can have two stuns in in the entire skills points while the sustain tank maybe only have one stun but it can sustain the entire team fight for the entire duration uh, in doing the team fight so it depends again so we shall move on so okay very easy tank tank is very durable okay you know there are some uh mage like uh sylvana all these and then there are some asthma right they are uranius they are also considered the tank role but we shall not touch on that uh. we shall touch only on the tank so those are also tanky also have sort of uh like four three to four types of ten line over here uh. okay so firstly they are durable secondly usually it is the setup uh, of the team Usually, right, a tank will have CC. So all these CC will start the fight for the team, for your marksman, for your support. Then when it start the fight, when it's when it land the first kill on the opponent, that is when your majors and your marksman or your assassins come and dish the damage. So these are the thing you, you can do for your team, and you must do ah. Uh, you don't wait for your team to come poke for you without you setting up for them. So the third point, hard to clear away for most tanks. So usually you got what Kufra, you got like. Uh, Paxia. All this hero is very hard to clear with. But if you have Grog, you have like, uh, I think Grog is the best to clear with. With a Grog, you clear the wave easily. I tell you, all. easy game. So, for damage is medi- uh, mediocre because uh, some of the tanks right, 
they actually deal a decent amount of damage to some certain roles such as like mage uh such as assassin so but they are not the main source of it lah so if you think about it uh, uh it is okay it, you can do, still do some damage but at the end of the day you still need your team to come set up for you then for the last part will be the mobility depending on heroes but usually require like it's very low lah like you see grog grog only got uh the passive to increase the movement speed the ult can also you know try to run away but all this requires high cdr uh the well if a kufra if you want to run away uh you only got a ball because the first skill where you want to jump away right is very easy to counter all you need to do is you stand in front of the kufra the kufra cannot run already so almost all the mobility of the tanks right here is very low but recently they came out with this new uh hero atlas the mobility should be the highest among all tanks right now unless you want to put johnson in the side lah, huh? johnson can drive the whole map but uh, uh let's not talk about johnson anymore lah. I think People got a few asking Leila Tang eh? Uh, Leila Tang, I think maybe uh, you all need to drop your rank uh, <laughs> Then you all try to play huh? Don't play in the Mythic Glory Then go and try Leng Leila I think within 3 games, maybe your credibility drop to You 50, get the uh. K, get the A oh, I tell Then you. they ask you why you put the tank in the mall eh? oh, I tell you, you all better don't do all these things uh. uh, Don't do already, then you say what KCP say mm-hmm. one, okay? Uh, don't don't say go and say all this uh. don't please don't use a uh, tank way la, please okay thank you so we shall move on to the next slide okay so firstly what should be the objective as a tank so tank firstly has very high hp armor mag- and magic resistance with two lockdowns most tanks la. uh most tanks do not also have a uh, wave clear uh spells or has no 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 to little damage because uh, other than Grog, right, all their damage is just like, you know, 100, 200, 100, 200. They are most likely, they don't deal like 400, 500. And the creeps requires like, you know, 600 to 700 HP to clear. I'm not very sure. Uh, this one, I'll go and check. So regarding that, they can't cl- really clear wave. So in order to match with this uh, 131 setups, right, your match, which is the support, uh, they usually have few, it needs to have heroes to clear the waves. So let's say I am using Krufra, I do not have any wave clearing uh, spells. So what I can use for mage to help me clear the wave in the mid lane is maybe like Lilia, I can use Luo Yi, I can use Fasa because all these have a uh, decent, decent wave clearing. Whereby I cannot use a uh, Kufra with uh, you know Velia and none of us clear waves. If we really do in these two combo, Kufra and Velia, then our Marksman or Assassin's needs to have the capabilities to wave clear or we must have a game plan of you know you know the side lane come mid and help us clear the wave then that will be all right so if let's say my my mage is something like Valia so what i can use is maybe grog to you know compensate for the Valia's wave clear and let i will just do the wave clear for him lah huh? don't have to you know uh, take two single target and then by then nobody clear the wave your marksman over there ticker ticker the wave then it takes too long for you to you know take the take your jungles take your uh go go crab this kind of thing because all those are also important and if you don't clear wave fast enough you have lesser times to do the others so all this takes time and you need to have a balance between it so okay we shall move on to second point which uh tank also do not have a very good mobility okay okay not so bad so uh moving towards either of the side of lane may takes a long time and therefore uh mid control bush is actually one of the most common action and usually what i do the most like if they really want to go side lane i'll just throw them then i'll just stay at mid unless they really need my help over there then i'll go with them if they don't need then i'll usually stay mid reason being right if let's say I don't I go with them to you know gang one of side lanes, what the mid lane can do uh, is actually take over control of my side of uh mid lane. And if I want to go back, uh, I want to go back to the mid lane and take away the mid waves, right? They I most likely have to walk a long way from you know uh from the bath from the jungle area instead of from the river. Walking through and forth from the river is actually the fastest, but if I go with them, then you know, let's say they have two heroes such as like Kagura, they have like uh Kufra, and then they stand in front of there, right? 
I can't possibly open the map for them. Like even if I go in, it's very high chance that I die as well or I'm low. If I'm low or I die, then obviously objective for them to do is very easy. So maybe you can stay in the mid bush while they go and you know do uh go and catch opponents at side lanes or your supports can be the one that came the bush while you go and do the uh side ganks with your hyper carry. Or if you are confident enough or you have a Selena, your Selena can put the ward at mid bush, right? Then you go with your Selena. Uh, go for a four man game. At least there's a ward there, and you will know where they will come. You will have vision on when they come to your mid control. So all this uh is a uh, good pointers for you to take note. Or you can even try to play with Koopa, and your Koopa put some wards for your mid control. So even if when you come back, right, you can see that hey, uh, they haven't come to my area, or you you know that hey, they come and step on my ward already. So there inside of people, then try to take a safer route. So yeah, these are all the few pointers for the reason of the second pointer, like you try to stay around mid. Then the last point is always ensure that your position is always in front of the team and making setups for them, even if it costs your life. So most of the time, right, before the engage starts or like things like, you know, when they, they are like poking your MM, right, try to help them. Uh, try to help to take away the aggression or try to always set up queues for your team first. So in there is only two scenarios uh, right now for tanks. Either you set up the queues or you defend defend the team. So there's only two ways you can play the tank objectively and the best way lah. So I would recommend you guys to go for the way that you set up queues for your for your team, because that a uh, great offense is a uh, also a good defend for in my opinion lah. So you all can also try to always try to find targets to set up for your team and then as time goes by you will think that actually this is a better way than walking behind your behind your you know marksman and trying to protect them. And chances are now the assassin is very hard to protect. Now you take one scene, he he come and poke your MM, you want to defend, he press out He press out he come in, your MM die, your MM blame you. Give you your what F word the, the K word the K word the the, the what jing the the, the what toll uh, uh. all these come out then you see all these come out ah uh, then you as tank huh what I do I tanking then end up ah uh, no choice so better you stand in front you try to set up for them better than you defend them then they die in front of your face then you like what you are a failure in tank in your life but this is the meta now. They are all very, you know, mobility. They can kill your backline and run away in front of your face and laugh at you, put emoji right there. You don't you won't want that to happen, right? So by doing so, try to set up kills for your tank uh for your team and you know things will be better for that. Any comments you wanna say? They only ask if uh <laughs> They ask if uh what do you think of certain hero as tank? In play in MPL also throw tank ah uh, draw hit tank ah uh. uh, what, okay. what is your opinion on that, that one right I will go through with you all later uh. I have uh, slides for it so that one you all stay tuned ah uh. mm. uh, so for now uh, I will say like when to die for your team right so the team fight will always like I said start either you or your team get caught or you start the fight by catching someone so you must always be there and then holding a good spot of a uh, bush and then try to either start the fight or the fight could have started because like uh, your fighter go and stand at the one of the bush then gonna caught like you know Sana always do but it's okay so then when he dies then the fight will directly move towards the directions and then we will try to fight again right there lah. so most of the time is there and must try to always stand in front lah. then the second point is better position should always be around here so like I put in this picture right uh, there's this the black circle marker area are uh, one of the best areas for tankers should be tanker should never be uh, like at the side top lane uh, side top bush all this is very you know not so good lah yeah all this area not not ideally but better to be is in the mid area so when you maneuver you you you'll be the first to reach as well or chances are they will walk into your bush or one of your bush or you will have good vision for your teammates. So better positions for tank are always around here. And if you watch my stream, right, I'm always around these corners, lah. Hey, I don't really go to side lanes and uh take farms from tank unless the unless my team requires me to do so. So that's all for this part. 
So I really stress that you all should die for your team, even though I don't die so much. But when I back right, I usually live with like uh, one quarter of HP and below one. Or even if I got immortality, I'll always stay with the team. That's, that's just it. La. So you must soak until you cannot soak. Yeah, you must, uh, you soak. must soak as much as possible. Yeah. Not, not as you don't die, you stand at the back. Uh. You stand behind the marksman and you don't die. Uh. That one, you're gonna get the toll, you're gonna get the jing, you know. <laughs> uh, you're gonna get the hashtag out already. Uh. Uh. So you better go in front, soak as much as possible before you get out. But you also cannot anyhow die. Um, of course. Uh. You anyhow die, you gonna this one. Uh, yeah. You yeah. really gonna this one, so don't. Uh. So you cannot die. Yeah, you must judge how you should judge. Like you pick off good opponents. Mm. Then from there, you you know do things at the right decision. Don't don't wah the team not there. You go in. You gonna eh, you gonna eh. You know this one who out ah. You play uh, tank. You anyhow die who out ah. Uh, uh, you know ah. Uh. Uh, so really ah, uh, you must you must have a good judgment as a tank whether you your team can follow up for you or things like that. So not saying that. Uh, people scold you a bit or people like that out you uh, then you you cannot be a tank you can still be a tank but uh, play more wisely then uh, play more play more and then try to ask uh, questions watch more videos of you know uh, the second placing third placing yeah all this is good lah huh? so let's go to the next slide so okay this is one of the uh, video that I managed to crop uh. Uh, it is how do I set up for the team, right? And this video, right, is just a, a small pick off, but it's a pick off where I wait until my team sort of knows that uh, to come nearer to me to dish out the damage when I do the setup. So if you watch carefully, right, but this one is not LY4, la. this one is just Jason and me. Yeah, always, always. Uh, always, no choice. La. So you must always see where your tank is when you as a player, you see your tank player where. Position yourself well so you can fall out for your tank. Yeah, uh, so I see, see my Fasa beside yeah. me. I try to get one damage. Uh, I managed to land one skill. You see where my Granger at? Not coming to help me. But it's okay. It's okay. I got Kaja and Fasa. Uh, yeah, so in this kind of setup, I just do a setup for them, right? We get two kills. Yeah, so but I have Resurrect as a low HP tank. I still can move forward because I still have the capability to tank and try to uh, take some of the Bruno damages. So by doing that, uh, you can actually uh, waste some, uh, take away some of the aggression from your marksman that your opponent hyper carry can touch you first. Yeah. Then secondly is by doing so, since you have resurrect, why not utilize your user uh, resurrect right? Just stand in front and ensure that they waste their spells or they waste their AA on you because when they are doing so, your hyper carry uh, also is also doing the same thing. It's also dishing damage to the opponents. So since you got Resurrect, go ahead. So actually you think about it, Resurrect is one of the core items for tank. But it is recommended not to buy on the first item. La. Yeah, you have to buy maybe one Athena shield, then you buy Resurrect at least, then things will look better, right? So uh, all these uh, setups are just like, you need to communicate. La. You need to communicate with your hyper carry or your support. It's better for both. La. Because in this game, we have a 10k goal lead. So we can do it with just one... Uh, call one one damage dealer. If let's say we, the game is uh closer, and what I caught is someone like Uranus, right? I might need Granger with a Fasa, because uh of how tanky the Uranus is, and uh our my my team don't have so much damage like like Granger and Fasa maybe was maybe one item lesser, and things like that. I'm pretty sure you might need more than one player, so you must know how to judge. So for that moment, I seen. Jason like tried to use ulti on Koopa before this this timing and he managed to get a kill so I'm confident that if I manage to lock one Kufra, uh, Koopa and all the Kagura right it's very likely that uh, 99% like Fasa, Fasa will, can kill for me so I don't need a uh, Granger but if let's say in this scenario I didn't see the Fasa kill the Koopa or like uh, the inside person is like maybe a Uranus and I know Uranus don't have verify or something I will call my Granger as well as my Fasa to come over and we try to instant keep the uh, Uranus immediately after I jump on him so before I do that I will say I will say maybe things like hey I got jump and I want to jump this bush uh, you all can keep an eye on it so they can you know uh, screen on there and when I straight jump and I really lock someone 
their damage output will straight go towards that and uh the timing where you jump on them until the time that they want to run right it will all it will not be wasted you will dish out the most damage during that time so these are one of the things that y'all can learn la. so uh so uh what should i use the different type of tank and overall what are my primary role as the different types of tank so currently for me uh the cc tank damage tank and sustain tank right then there are people that ask me like things like jaw head la cho tank right all these are just pseudo tanks so all those pseudo tanks are tanks that they are not a uh, main tank their role is not tank but they can be used as tank because of the way that uh, they can grab people or they can kick people to a weird position so they are considered a pseudo tank so for the pseudo tank i will answer later uh, during the you know Q and A or after or maybe I will answer after this slide lah after the tank roll slide. So firstly, depending on the entire draft and game plan. So if let's say you your team requires a catching capability uh capabilities of tank right, it's very high recommended that you take the CC tank like Atlas or Kufra because holding that you can actually get two stuns, and you can also like you know, uh catch people while uh, with two spells so not many uh, tank have this kind of spells only Atlas, Kufra and up the Tigreal, Minotaur but all those are you know uh, slightly this more disadvantageous due to the stats and uh, it's not really on meta because it's not very very effective it, but those are still good la. so so you have to see whether if you requires a clear clear wave row so imagine that like, let's say I playing with Jason and Jason draft a Valia or draft a Sunina. I know that my my team won't have a clear wave uh, capabilities, and I need to be the clearing capabilities, right? I will take a Grog. I'll I'll ram ram the my first skill into the wave creep wave, and ensure that my hyper carry have the easiest time to clear the wave and do his own things. So things like that can help. If let's say you and your teams communicate earlier, like. Uh, hey bro, what you playing? Then uh, he will say like, yeah, bang, don't nah. I play. Hey, I I really or yeah. Ah, I really. Uh, he really. I think you better don't mm. play what right? play Paxia. Ah, uh, yeah. Then aku grok. I really Paxia. No I man. grok. Uh. Then we 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 can actually balance the roles. Like my grok can clear wave. His Valia can you know poke the enemy until the enemy cry. Things like that. So, communicate with your friend first. Like uh, you know, most of the time you know maybe outside wear mask cannot really hear but try to say that you want to play this so when you know that your friend wow your friend want to play grog you can actually play selena all this eh? because this. yeah you can you can go selena bro uh, yeah selena. sign language no dog. yeah go selena that throw arrow you know <laughs> yeah so this kind of thing yeah you all need to communicate lah so if the mid has the spells to clear the wave right then if you really want to play grog again lah, grog with a uh, mage that clears wave right go ahead but uh, try to use something that can uh, try to have the game plan of invading because if you got a mage that can clear wave you got grog right most of the time you all don't have much cc you all don't have much cc or you all don't have something to catch uh, then I, I, I prefer that you all try to invade their blue or invade their red then things like that right most of the time uh, the game will have a faster pace on your side mm. if you all don't have this kind of fast pace uh, invasion then you all still pick this kind of hero right then when you're clear wave so fast, you all got nothing to do. You all sure went throw game one, and at the same time, your your opponent may take a CC tank like Atlas and can catch your team while you're just a grog over there trying to clear wave, trying to clear wave and ulti on the air lah. So not really recommended. Uh, so try to have a balance between your mage, your marksman slash assassins and your tank. So the last thing would be actually whether if they have many backline damage dealers that deals no percentage damage. If they have such heroes, right? They don't have any percentage damage heroes. They have like all the nonsense hero like Rafaela. They have like Selina, uh, Natalia. This kind no percentage damage but deals uh burst damage or doesn't matter one because all those heroes can't really burst those. Uh, sustain tank so what I mean by sustain tank will be actually heroes like Hylos heroes like Paxia they are very 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 tanky they have one sun they all have one stun but 
uh, they don't clear wave fast. They have slowly their clear wave is like mediocre, but their sustain is the strongest. So when you need when you deal with heroes like assassins or like uh all the Rafaela supports all these kind right when they don't have percentage damage spells go for it and use those uh sustain tank your st sustain tank uh, most of the time I uh, can stand there for the entire game one and chances are if you die uh at a very good very good timing or smartly uh, your opponent most of the time will be team wipe already then you're a strong tank lah okay so when I when I determine uh when I should pick uh CC tank or all this right is usually for me I prefer to play CC tank because it can help me uh make plays for my team so I can stun stun the opponent and make sure that opponents are you know uh get caught by me and usually even if you play rank games right they will come and try to dish out some damage because they like the kill they like the goal so that is a very important thing for them. Then second thing for me is I like CC tank is also because of my comfort. Uh, they are all my comfort tanks. So you guys hardly see me use sustain tank more than CC tank lah. If you all know, if you all think that uh, but then if you all think that sustain tank isn't good because I don't use, then you are wrong. Sustain tank is still strong in some scenarios. It's just I'm not good at it lah. If I use sustain tank during MPI, I think the whole game hashtag me out already. Six plays or what? Uh, six plays. Uh. Six <laughs> plays already. No choice. <coughs> because it's not my forte. It's not something that I train every day or like I train during like training. So uh, try, try to use uh, the tank that you are very most comfortable in and then abuse it. If let's say you are a damage tank, you are a grog player and you have a friend that plays Selena, then keep going for it and then chances are you will get very good balance and you all can have killing high, high killing potential things like that but if let's say you're a cc tank then try to ask your supports to get those like clear wave that is viable so you all can have some balance in between and then you know play the game well lah. so that clears my answer for this three row so for me i would prefer cc tank over the damage and sustain tank but I'm also okay with damage tank, but I'm not very good at sustain tank, I would say. Or I would say that this sustain tank don't have an objective yet for me. Like, I I can do more with a damage tank or a CC tank. So this is why this is why for CC tank and damage tank, it's more for the high skill cap. And while the players, if let's say your girlfriend or boyfriend don't know how to play ML, right, just tell them to, hey, go and pick high loss. Then you go follow me, follow me. I tell you that hero very strong even for a uh, beginner's player yeah because of its capabilities it's just there right it can't really excel so much okay so i hope that clears almost all of your questions so one of the questions that i heard was uh, about the pseudo tanks which are the fighters slash tank they are usually like tanks like jawhead they are tank like a uh, cho uh like camellia right all this Leila. uh Leila not consider pseudo tank no? it's considered an OOB tank really. <laughs> yeah so don't try not to use that tank that tank uh, put into the rubbish bin uh, put a sticker on it and say never use it okay so for like Jawhead, Cho and Camellia why they are considered the pseudo tank is because they are not in the tank attributes they don't have like uh, okay let's say a Glock have 6900 HP at most, a uh, Cho with a tank emblem only has 4,700 HP, something like that. So, you are losing out the attributes, but you are staying on to as a tank. But why you need him to be the tank? Because uh, maybe the draft system works is they all ban all the good meta tank heroes and uh, you are very comfortable in Cho. And if you are comfortable in Cho and there is no more tanks left, go ahead and use it and take a tank emblem. I would prefer you to pick a hero that you comfort anytime uh, more than a hero that you don't use and you try to use it. I think your boyfriend will break up with you, your girlfriend will cheat on you, things like that. And I really don't want that to happen. We are all here to learn and you must learn this. Don't use heroes that you all don't know how to use, really. Then pick your Cho, your for if Cho is your forte, pick it, kick it in front of your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you'll be proud of you. The next day you will see trust me trust me then by then please send me a skin because i give you this kind of good tips lah 
Okay, so uh, for Camellia, right, as the tank compared to Cho and Jaw, Cho and Jaw is just to catch people when they are tanking and stay in the bush. But for Camellia, it's just to enhance the team fight. So for Camellia, if let's say opponent has 4 melees, it's very likely that your ulti triggers easily. So your ultimate can link 3 person. Eh. Then at the same time, if you can manage to link a three, good 3 person, right, then that is your only job as a tank Camellia. You don't have to do anything else. Then you press all your skills, you walk in front, face, you just kiss the opponent's hyper carry and kiss until you die. That is the end of your role. So it is a bit like sustain tank without being so su sustainable, but has a good uh, ultimate to set up for your team. Lah. That is the only thing that I can see from, from here. So that's all from tank. So you got any questions? Can ask your girlfriend to play. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend can, uh... Your girlfriend? Mm, my, I know girlfriend. Uh -huh. Can ask your girlfriend to play oh. Camellia. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. Wow, you don't scare me, I don't have girlfriend. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> my assistant coach confusing me now. <laughs> okay, so what are the three examples of a tank? So for CC tank would be definitely be Kufra. Mm. Kufra is the best CC tank right now. Then for the second one, which is the sustain tank, will be actually Paxia. Paxia is considered the best sustain tank compared to High Loss. And if High Loss and Paxia kiss together, chances are Paxia will win High Loss. If Paxia, the W, which is the second spell, knows how to use in the perfect way. So take note about that. And the best uh, damage tank will be actually Grog. Grog first kill with his ultimate can almost kill an assassin or a mage. So please note that these three are the best in terms of the role. So if you want something like a CC tank in a subcategory, you want it in other than Kufra will be Atlas. You want Paxia, but Paxia got banned, you can take high loss. If let's say Grog got banned, uh, I don't think there's anyone that can suit the Grog uh, tank role. If you really really want to try, you can try actually Terisla. La. But Terisla, the ultimate is not as ideal as Grog. But the early game, the way of clearing, the idea is there, la, it's the same. So this is the replacement, I would say. La. So, so Kufra or Atlas number one? Some people are asking. Kufra or Eltas? Eltas. Uh, if, I think it depends on your comfort as well. If let's say you are very, very good at, you play 300 games of Kufra and you only play 50 games of Atlas, I'm pretty sure your Kufra is stronger than your Atlas. But if let's say you're playing a decent amount, la, uh, Kufra will be stronger in the early game, will be very strong against your supports and your assassins. Whereby Atlas is very strong when in the late game or in the mid game phase. And if let's say opponent uh, have all the clunky heroes where they like to stick together, right? Uh, Atlas is very strong. Second thing is, if you pick the Atlas, right? Chances are opponent will take verify. If your Kufra opponent won't want to take verify so much. So this is two variables you can consider. Maybe you you afraid that they're going to invade and you are good at this both, you can take an Atlas, then they were going to take Purify as hyper cost, then they won't try to invade. So that is sort of a win 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 scenario. Like. But in exchange, your early game is very weak. You need to make sure that your early game is strong, like if I play Atlas, I'll tell Abang, Abang. Abang early game, Abang. Early game. Uh, Atlas early means game. Abang early game. If you don't early game, I Kufra. Abang late game, Abang early game. Yes, uh, yes, change. yes. Aku will be the early game if you want to play late game. Uh. Simple as that. So you all have to also again reminder to communicate with your supports. Because the hyper role will definitely be the late game or mid game one. Unless you want to play land slot. Even if you play land slot, it is still recommended between me and your supports to play the early game. So that you can set up for the land slot properly and uh, win the team fight convincingly. So things like that you all can be reminded of. So I shall go to the summary point. So firstly, summary number one. In the different role, there is also a subcategory on the role to find out what you want. So in tank, there is three kinds of sub subcategory, right? The same as for assassin, for majors as well. So you must know what you really want. Then you try to master that subcategory role first. Then you slowly, slowly move on to others. What I really recommend you all to do is uh, to to find out the meta subcategory role and master them because chances are they are the most strongest in the current version and they will dish out the most you know uh, most amount of objective should be if there is la. so 
for the second point would be being able to find the most suitable role is also important and able to select more than just one hero with similar subcategory in the role. So in in let's say a role that you, okay let's say you got a marksman instinct or you got assassin instinct, you just play the assassin role very strong. Okay, so that is your role already. But which type is is the one that you want? You go and try. You go and try for maybe uh ten games for each each category. Then from there you think that eh hey, I'm a Hellcat player. Then go and play Hellcat. Then Hellcat similarly uh is also a diving in hero. So you must find other diving heroes such as Hellcat to you know uh master those heroes. So for that you all need to find out lah. So please find out yourself. If you all want us to find out later on, uh, we are gladly to help you lah. If let's say you're a Cho player and you you are always using Cho to fight to stay in the bush, right? Your next uh hero you can actually learn is actually Jaw Head. Jaw Head is also similar to Cho. But if let's say your Cho is like a split pushing Jo Cho like to go and take tower, steal, steal, this kind of thing, uh, go and play Masha. Masha is also quite suitable of a uh, similar Cho but better in terms of early game. So this is okay. Then for second summary, please do not tap your skill shots for some of the heroes out there. If you realize you have been missing the whole time, please, please don't tap. If you tap, I think you also hold your Mobile Legends delete. <laughs> you you tap, then I don't know lah. You tap everything out, and then you also out. <laughs> you out, you out. Okay. So remember, don't tap ah. This one, this one, I highlight a lot of times, but. I'm pretty sure some of you may still tap when you all play. Then you all will recognize, eh, hey, actually KZP got to say don't tap. Then you all try to, try to adjust because this is one of the bad habits a lot of people do. If you see any streamers out there tapping also, uh, go on their stream, tell them don't tap. Scold them. Uh, you know you know who I'm talking about, right? Tonight they're streaming or not. They're streaming, better go there and tell them don't tap. Yeah. Uh. Don't send them stars, okay? Uh, this kind of tapping players, don't send stars. Uh. Uh, okay, so the last one will be Recognize your attributes and make use of it So if let's say you are playing a tank You must make use of your attributes And then don't go and hide behind your marksman And allowing them to die Play as a tank, then hide in, stand in front Go and do setups Even if you lose in that rank game It doesn't mean it is your fault It could be uh, You could not make the most ideally out of it But at least you are doing what you should do then from there you learn to get strongly better, better and better lah. In terms of maybe mechanics or the timing to set up for your team is not correct. Uh, then don't go and t- go and don't go and blame your team. Don't go and report your team. This kind of thing. Try to focus on yourself more first regarding this part. So for this, I think, uh, we shall call it a day. So, so let's go to Q and A. So. What are the Q and A, sir? Q and A, ah, hmm, related one lah to support and tanks only ah. <laughs> assassins okay. also. Yeah, assassins. Also. Assassin not much really eh. Oh. Okay, Kelvin T J X ninety eight asks you, what do you think of Nana support now? Uh, I think Nana is uh very good if my girlfriend play or my wife. Yeah, if I have a girlfriend. And that time I want to bond with my girlfriend, right? Let's say I'm not married, I'm just single. Then I think I will tell my girlfriend to play Nana. Ah, okay. Yeah, then we play together, then he, I just tell her to help me hex, this kind of thing. But it is not a hero as in competitively now because it's not uh it's not in the meta because a lot of spells right now can dodge the Nana Monila can uh dodge the ulti quite easily because it lands the spell quite slow la. so I won't really recommend Nana la. just go for Rafaela or this kind of thing even if, even it's stronger actually okay next question Cyclops uh, Eudora uh, non-meta mages why are they not picked at high rank games also uh, I think reason being is because the early game is very weak if the early game is slightly stronger I think it is very viable so for the next patch, right, I think the Yuda is uh, going to be better. By then, then we'll try lah. But for now, uh, reason being, the early game is weak. There are a lot of stronger early game heroes out there. The late game is not fantastic because there are some heroes out there that are also stronger than them in late game. So you think about it, then might as well I pick others. 
uh, let's say I want to pick Yula, might as well I pick a uh, Fasa. I am at the same amount of level I can deal more damage and it is further. And I still got mobility to fly. Eh. Then early game can do what? Can stun can stun link ah. Uh, okay, <laughs> can stun link. Then, <laughs> uh can stun link then uh I can find a Selena to stun. At the same time got a chance to kill. So Eudora isn't ideal and Cyclops like that. Bye bye Eudora. Yeah, bye bye. Wait for, out, eh. wait for a revamp. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Yeah. Next question, ah. Huh? What are the considerations uh up there when uh thinking of picking mage to counter opponent line up? You know, this one more to me lah. Mm. So for me, uh because usually in our team at least wow this one I can say uh, later all the pro team watch out. Say yeah, say say. In ma- in ISG uh, usually as mage player I last pick uh. So I will <laughs> I get to see all five of the opponent heroes first before I decide on my heroes. So there are usually some uh, considerations like uh, first is just now if you're listening to our uh, talks uh, we already have told you that uh, one consideration to pick as a mage is you have to cover up each other's weakness so just nice one tank one mage today here we tell you he weak in early I must be strong in early. I weak in the early hey, wait I strong in early he can be weak at the early. Mm. So we must cover each other that is consideration number one. Consideration number two, the hero must do a lot in the game. So, what I mean by do a lot, eh? let's say opponent uh, are very uh, clunky heroes. They uh, they don't have much uh, mobility. Then Valia and Lower Yi will do a lot, right? Mm. If opponent a lot of squishy heroes and they are short range, then maybe I'll pick Fasa Kagura, right? Because they can do the most in the game. Mm. So, this really comes with experience. So, the more you play, the more you will know what heroes are suitable for what situation la. Mm. so this one for you to find out uh, of course uh, if you all want if we get enough requests RSG might uh, uh, put out a tier list of the hero of what we think are good mm. at the moment for you for reference so this is of course if you all like and share our stream uh, like and share our RSG page uh, go comment on our RSG page on what you all would like to see then maybe uh, the management will take some time to consider and then we will do up something for you all. Mm. 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 Actually, LY4 have, uh, but you all see, you all might laugh. Uh. So, y- y- chong? Y- chong B tier. <laughs> okay. So this is one thing. Okay, okay. I got, guess that's the end, right? Got one uh, ask if uh, you know how to sing Xue Hua Piao Piao. What is that? What is that? <laughs> what, what is Xue Hua Piao Piao? You sing for me la. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay so sorry. Uh, you want to hear a song, but I don't know how to sing. Uh. Okay, so let's go back. Oops, so sorry. Uh. So we are ending the stream soon. So firstly, please go into this survey down below. And please help us do the survey. So once you do finish the survey, go and comment done, done, done. Maybe... Maybe the admins will go and give you all uh, some skins lah. But firstly, uh, let me uh, give out the winner's names because they, my admin mm. already gave me. You want to give the name? Nah, sure. The winners of the giveaway, what they win? Uh? Uh, they win Elite Skin. Elite Skin? Uh? Uh. Got diamonds? Uh? Uh, this one later. Okay, so the uh. winner of random Elite Skins, uh, the first uh, one, two, three, five winners. Uh. Okay, ah. Uh? I'm going to say your name already ah. If you're not watching ah, you never say here ah, I take your elite skin. <laughs> okay. First winner. Carol go Carol. Okay. Eager? Uh, eager, ah. okay calling once. Calling twice. Calling three. Five count my skin right. Uh, 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 four. I don't like. <laughs> five. I steal your skin ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Second winner. Okay. We have this one our fan eh? Very this long one long. loyal supporter. Okay, mini so mini oh, so second winner ah. Same thing ah. Count to three, never respond in the chat. I was why our why our <laughs> fans count to three already? Oh, because fan or hardcore supporter. Oh. Okay, one two three, my skin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, third winner, Kelvin Te. Kelvin Te confirm in the screen lah. Ah. Okay, same thing five one two three four five ah my skin. Oh, uh, all your skin uh, now? Now I 3 skin already uh. Fourth skin <laughs> Mr. Donald Ng Okay Mr. Donald Ng uh. Are you in the stream? You must say me 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 <laughs> Must hashtag also Okay Not in the Not in the stream my skin 
，哎、欸，万度去破费，开心。哎，叫啥？哇！哎，叫伊文来呀 ！Congrats, congrats, you win, you win. You are the only winner tonight. <笑> okay, fifth skin, Tan Xin Liang. Okay, congratulations, you are the fifth winner. Ah, this one I give you lah. I win too much today. They give you some. Okay. Hey, congrats to all the winner today. Ah,、uh. the five winners of the random elite skin giveaway. Ah,、uh, my admin will contact you. I'll give you the skin soon. Okay. okay. Thank you for supporting us. Ah.、Uh. Yeah. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode on the twenty second. Is it? Is it、mm, on the twenty second of July? Yeah, twenty second of July when we will cover the rest of the three rows.、Mm. My assistant coach for the episode will be wait for official news. <laughs> But if you all still want Jason, please. You hashtag Jason in lah for twenty two July if you all want. Yeah,、uh. so. But if don't not enough hashtag, I in means that. Hashtag other people in here. No choice, ah.、Uh, no choice, yeah. Then so for those who have signed up for the Q and A sessions later, please head over to the Discord now. We will ro- begin in roughly five to ten minutes.、Mm. So join the EXP Plus Monetary Voice channel and also leave your questions in the question text channel. So those of you who haven't joined the Skip ML Discord, please check your email for instructions or use the link below. So anyway, for those who are still here, we want to release some exciting news for you. Moving forward, for the sessions after workshop on Discord, we'll be giving you all a chance to play with the coaches. I think this one will be for the next next workshop, lah. I don't think it's for this workshop. So next workshop for this. So please also stay tuned next Wednesday where uh Sing Si ah Sing Si ah Sing Si will be talking more about ML patches and、uh. meta changes for the previous month again. Okay. And he will also have a special guest again. Again, <laughs> yeah, I don't know who. Who again? Again, ah,、uh. uh. maybe girl.、Eh? I don't know. Okay.、Uh. So again, this is the third episode of EXP Plus workshop presented by Skips. Thanks to all of you for watching, and we'll see you all on the twenty second. Thanks for the survey, ah.、Uh. Survey,、yeah. uh, we post a link in the chat for the survey in the Twitch chat, ah.、Uh. For you all haven't do the survey, better go and do, ah.、Uh. Mm. Okay. Do the survey, do properly. Give us your honest feedback on the workshop today. Whether you all learn or never learn, ah,、uh, what song you all want us to sing next time? Request earlier so we go and learn. <laughs> okay, in the additional comments. Okay, that's all from me. Okay, bye bye.、Right. Bye guys, thank you. Looking for the best music.